All right, recording looks good. Numbered correctly. <laughs> George. Can't he still count. hasn't uploaded. He, he hasn't uploaded the, the latest episode to YouTube. I'm so out of I sequence. I can't post anything to the site. I, I don't get George. I mean, he says he's busy. What is he doing? How busy how can he are be, you? How can he be George, busy? I hope you hear this. How busy are you making pizzas that right. you can't up upload episodes? No, I've, Some, seen sometimes, that, I've seen that commercial with the guy who's making I'm the boxes. I'm crippled, and I can still put an episode up the same night we would record. Yeah, but you've seen that commercial with the guy who's making the pizza boxes, right? The Domino's pizza boxes? Yeah. Now, that guy's busy, right? But George is just back there. One flip, two flip. And then he's done, and he just puts it in the thing and spreads the, the I tomato paste I think you'd rather box there. balls. All right, um, since we're recording, five. So... Do we want to do a skit of some kind? No. No. All right. All right Hang on to go. your capes, people. You're about to join Super Geeks. Oh, no, no, no. A little, a little more enthusiasm. Come on. <laughs> Superhero voice. Here we go. Or announcer voice. Here we go. <clears throat> Hang on to your capes, ladies and gentlemen. You're about to join Super Geeks. All right. You can have that music playing, man. George There's some beautiful likes. stuff. No, we're not like George. We have to wait till he what? the damn thing. I like it. I love we can the get music. Started. We can start talking while George, the music's going. We are George Light today. We are George <laughs> Light. I like that. <laughs> there is That's, no George. You know, we are free. It's a six to four calorie, calorie beer, people. <laughs> Welcome to Super Geeks episode 39. My name is Ross. And I will be taking over the, the MC position for the night. My reign of terror has begun. You may never give up. You may never get it. You may never get it back. Once you like the Cowboys quarterback, once he gets it, he's on. You know, George is gonna have to go yeah, to another team. Yeah, Ross is now Dak Pre what's his name? <laughs> Dak Press Dak Preston Dak Prescott. Prescott. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something well, as I said, my name is Ross. Uh, you can find me uh, anywhere on the internet, www.iliveloveplay.com. Super Geeks is a, a Live Love Play podcast produced in association with Busy Little, Beavers, Busy Little Beaver Productions. And joining today, once again, is Will. Hey, what's up? And Anthony. All right. <laughs> and where might people find the two of you? Oh, let's see. I'm on uh, Twitter, I guess. At uh, intrinsic, that's an int intrinsic with a U.S. on the end. And you can follow me on Twitter at Anthony Battles. I think I'm a little out of it today. I mean, I'm, I'm anticipating Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. This is what I'm thinking. Mm hmm. Have you been? I'm not. You know, I, I'm not going to be having that traditional uh, family dinner when it, where everyone pretends they're happy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, that one person breaks down, and it goes to pot. Hey, that's the joy of Thanksgiving, spending time with family, watching the meltdowns, and then coming together stronger for it. Oh, no, you see, I just show up for the food, and then I leave. There's that, too. <laughs> that's what I do. Right? I don't even stay I around for the food. I hate to eat and run, but bye. Uh, yeah, bye, Felicia. I'm done. I'm out. I come for the food. I get my leftovers, and I'm out. I know. It's like, can I get my pie to go? <laughs> Well, I'll be spending Thanksgiving with my girlfriend's sister's family who live uh, not too far away. And thankfully, they have a car, so they'll be able to pick us up. I will say this, Ross. Pray. And I mean pray for some family explosion to happen where all that drama gets put out on the table. Oh, this Take. family is dramatic enough without any kind of outside influence. They're, 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 they're pretty nuts, and it's fun. Take your phone, make sure it's on record, and then when they have the blow up, put it to the internet. Also, make sure that the phone is charged so it doesn't <laughs> go out on you while you're filming this. Well, here's what's going to be crazy is that we usually end the evenings that we visit with a game of Cards Against Humanity. Game of Cards of Humanity? Cards Against Humanity. Oh. I don't think Will has ever played that. I have no? played this sub similar on the the uh, the net on the computer. I think we did it once when uh, George or Jack had one of his things on. on oh, Friday okay, nights. yeah, yeah. We, we did that had... last Friday, actually. Yeah. 
But I've never a, actually played the actual card game. I think that would be fun for all of us hosts to do together sometime on the air. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, before Christmas. I'm all for it. Sweet. Christmas? Well, before Christmas. It's like a Christmas so, special. This is your Christmas special. But we got to have George here for it. We got to have him here. Yeah, for we got to have George. Cause... So since it is Thanksgiving, should we talk about what we're thankful for? Yeah, sure. Uh, Anthony, go ahead, Ross, go first. Lead it off. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> it's your idea, Anthony. I, I like to hear what everyone's thankful for. Yeah, you want, to, you want to gauge the room. Well, you know me, I'm all sunshine, daffodils, rainbows, and happy things, looking on the bright side. And, well, first and foremost, the thing I'd be thankful for is my girlfriend. I, uh, with her, picked up, moved out of California to a place where it's much cheaper to live. And so far, I mean, despite it being a very big cultural and um, environmental difference, it's been good so far. I've got a great family back home. I'm very fortunate to, to have that kind of support system, and as well as her family, who have been very open and welcoming to me. Isn't that nice? Very sweet. I'm scraping all the excess sugar <laughs> off of me. <laughs> For all me, right, Will. I don't know. 2016's been a very weird year. I'm kind of glad it's getting towards 2017 is what I'm thinking. And that's it. It's been a very strange year. It, that it has. Well, I think it'd be easy for me to list the things that I'm not grateful for. Go ahead. Like, well. <laughs> he doesn't like me. I think that's about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Say that for the other show. That's where you I know. That's I know. Me, right? Well, it says. Oh, in, that's going to be fun. In in you, intro. Of Super Geeks, I am thankful for video games. Well, that's the truth. Although I haven't got nearly as many I would like. Although right, they do have right. the Steam's. It's kind of weird. Steam's the uh, autumn sale. Autumn sale is up, but it's only up until the 29th. What? That's just the autumn. Are they going to have a winter sale by the time they, when they get into December? Oh yeah, they 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 their sales have thinking. come seasonal. At first, it was just the summer and winter sale, and then they right. did kind of a, a mini event right around. Thanksgiving, but now it seems they're doing a full sale each season. That's what I was thinking. Because I just also, looked and I'm thankful for since you're talking over me, at all of you. I'm thankful for my granddaughter. I love her to death. Her, oh, check this out. So my granddaughter and I were playing a game yesterday, and I told her knock it off. She's going to get hurt. And so we went back and forth. Yes, you will. No, I won't. Finally, I said, yes, you will. And then she started saying, no, I won't. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. You've got to tell me like that. Gotta... Her. She is the angel in my life. <laughs> so now she's going to start walk, talking like... Um... She did that again this morning. She's just... Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> talking, talking like a robot to you. Yeah. yeah. No, I think she's trying to get you used to hearing that monotone voice. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a, a good segue. Unless you, there's anything else you guys want to talk about. Well, I mean, going into the Thanksgiving, and this is one that's been I've seen on TV and so forth. Like, what's your favorite food type? I mean, it, it, some some people don't have it. Some people don't like turkey. But from your, everything that you can have on Thanksgiving, what's your favorite food? It can be, you know. Turkey, jelly, cranberry sauce. You like? Oh, see, I don't like cranberry sauce. I do like. I will eat it by the can. <laughs> really? Wow. Okay. No, I don't like cranberry sauce. I I'm going like to be stocking up on it at the grocery store after Thanksgiving. It's going to be so cheap. I will be set for a month. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine Ross sitting there looking out the window of his apartment, eating cranberry sauce, carrot cranberries out of a can? I just staring see, at people. I just with see with the red lips. Yeah, but I just see I just see cans and cans in the little closet. You know how people have those, uh, you know, the stuff that they store mm -hmm. away for future. That's what I see with Ross. He's got thousands and thousands of cans, and he opens <laughs> one up, takes it out, opens it, just what you do, sits out, sits out his window, and just eating it, it right out of the can. Yeah. 
And he made a little <laughs> fort with the empty cans. <laughs> hey, that is one That'd sturdy be cool. fort. <laughs> and then, you know, of course, his phone system involves the cans, and each each can goes to a different room. You know? <laughs> with honey, I'm out. Of, I'm, honey, I'm out. Another can, please. Uh, honey, I broke <laughs> the uh, can opener. We would you go to the store for me, please? <laughs> yeah. So we just use, need a utility knife. That's all. Yeah, there you go. So, well, you know what I like is a turkey leg. See, I love turkey legs too. Ooh. Cranberry, and then some candy yams. That's what I like with the yes. marshmallows on it. I don't know about marshmallows, but definitely. What? I don't like God, the marshmallows. God, no, no, no. But I like the candied yam, definitely. Definitely love stuffing because it's coming out of the bird. It's got the juices of the bird. and that. I don't like dressing when you just buy it or make it with, you know, bread and celery or whatever. It's not as good. That's what, you know, when it's on the side. But if it's stuffing, it's in the bird. It's got the, oh, it's great. But the thing is, we, in England... You know they don't. We don't have. They don't have Thanksgiving Day because I mean it's, it's an American tradition. We have our turkey on Christmas Day, and so this is you know getting a turkey on Thanksgiving. We kind of when we came over. Well, when my family came over, we reversed it. We have turkey on Thanksgiving, then we have ham on Christmas Day. Does people do we, in the United States do we have turkey on both days? Uh, I've actually seen a lot of households do ham on Thanksgiving instead of turkey. Yeah, I've seen that too. I mean, t- turkey in twice in a month is a bit much. That's what Christmas, well, has, there's never been a set bird for Christmas. Turkey has been there, but it isn't as big a deal. It's not the centerpiece like it is for Thanksgiving. Yeah, in England, it is. It's the big one because that's what they. That's what that's the bird that they have. They don't have a lot of turkeys, but they do have turkeys for Christmas. Yeah, people. Well, we am, we export a lot of them. them. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and they're getting yeah, bigger yeah. too. If it was up to me, you have chicken wings. Chicken wings you for know? Thanksgiving. Ch- That's what wings. I'm saying. Hey, chicken wings. Show me a person who eats chicken wings and is sad. You'll never find it. Trust me. Anybody <laughs> eating chicken wings is happy. While they're Depends eating the chicken wings. Depends how hot they are. Once you've eaten about 50 of them, the, the uh, barbecue, the sauce all over your, your chin and cheeks yeah, and fingers and lips. shirt. The, the high of the, the wings finally going down, you look at yourself, my God, what have I done? How many did I eat? And then you wonder, hmm, I wonder if I gave five more. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's chicken wings. You never get sad. It's kind of like potato chips, though. You never just yeah. eat one. Right? No, it's either the whole bag or none at all. Right, you say, oh, I'll just have a few. And then 20 in, oh, man, I'm halfway through. I may as well eat the rest. You know, you're like, okay. Even if you pour, if you, you know, even that's, if you cheat and pour it into stuff. a bowl and put the bag back up, you, you still go back to the bag. Yes, I've seen that too. <laughs> Best thing in uh, potato chips is not buy them in the first place if you don't want to eat them. There you go. Well, do you guys have a standout Thanksgiving memory? Some uh, something that doesn't necessarily have to deal with family, but a, 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 a one of the holidays that really stood out for you. Well, I don't know. What about you, Anthony? Um, really? Usually it's the same every year. I play video games until it's time to eat. <laughs> and then, and plus I have football on in the background. And then when, I, when the, you know, food is over, I'll go back to video games and I'll let everyone do the dishes. So you unbuckle every... your be- do you buckle your belt and then do the t- top button? And no, I don't pick out. With your... that's one... No, I, that's one thing I don't do. You don't do submit not to overeat. the turkey coma? No, I don't do that because I want to play video games afterward. Well, I'll tell you my my favorite Thanksgiving story. I was stationed in Washington State at the time, and I was I, thankfully I wasn't on duty for Thanksgiving like I had been so many others where I'd be stuck on the ship the entire day. So I thought it'd be, I'd do something nice and I'd cook up a bunch of stuff for the guys who were on duty. And the night before Thanksgiving everything freezes over. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Washington, uh, in and around the sound area, the, the large saltwater inlets that go around the peninsula. 
it doesn't really snow there. It gets cold. It, it gets as cold as hell freezing over, but it rarely snows and it rarely ices. But this ice was so bad that it actually shut down the shipyard and that shipyard never shuts down. Thankfully, it cleared up enough that we were able to get a few people in, and I, I was able to get in the night before I had laid out a baking pan full of stuffing and vegetables and laid just uh, chicken thighs, the dark meat, on top, doused it all in white wine and let it bake for a couple hours, and it was a huge hit. Everybody loved it, and I'm glad I was able to do that for the guys who were on duty. Okay. I don't really have Thanksgiving memories because, again, like I say, I only really got them Thanksgiving well, until I came to the United States. So, um, I don't know. I mean, there's been some memorable ups and downs with Christmas is the big one for me. There have been uh, highs and lows because you've had, you know, uh, areas, things that are, have been, you know, wonderful, you know, especially when you were a kid. When you get what you want as a kid, it's the best day in the world, right? Uh, but as an adult, been some great things where we did some activity or we went, we didn't have actually did Christmas, we went to somewhere else and did that. Then there's been, you know, f for me, it's, uh, you know, usually around Christmas is where somebody dies in my family. Ouch. My grandmother died three days after Christmas. My dad died on the 2nd of January. And so usually when I get around December, I'm not really happy because, you know, that's, I'm like, okay, let's just, you know, get through the holidays and make sure nobody's dead by the time we get into January. <laughs> but that's, you know, for me, it's eyes, highs and lows. I think it's with every family. though. I mean, you've you got the times where you've had the, the knockdown, drag out fights with your family. There's the time where, you know, you, you've connected, like, you know, you've gone to a, not the soup kitchen, but, you know, you've gone to, a, we had, we had church. So you go to church. We, we actually went to midnight mass, even though we weren't Catholic, they were church of England. We had midnight mass. And then on Saturday, Christmas morning, you wake up, uh, in England, you have, uh, Christmas lunch or basically a midday meal. Then you went, we went, you know, to the church and we helped serve the homeless and stuff like that. And that was all fun. Or, or when you get older and you start participating in, you know, going to the, the, the less, you know, the parishioners of the, the parish and so forth. It was interesting for me. That's before I left the church itself, you know, but uh, for, for me, that's, that, those are the interesting ones for me. They bring back good memories and bad memories. What's your impression of Thanksgiving as an outsider looking in? It's commercialized. I think Texas, uh, Cass, yeah. The thing, the thing is Black Friday, they, they actually, it was exported to England. We never had Black Friday when I was a kid. We never had something right after Thanksgiving where everything was on sale. Because <laughs> you didn't have, it's just, a, it's just a Thursday in England. So, you know, you don't have this, this day set aside where you, you have Thanksgiving, and then the day after, everybody rushes out to get the store to buy stuff. <laughs> we just don't have that. I'm not so the biggest fan at, of Black Friday. No, I mean, but, you know, it, it was fine if you got a smaller population, small town or whatever. But once you start getting into the large population centers, trying to drive around, trying to get anything on Friday, especially if you need, like, say you forgot something. You know, you, you went out shopping on the week before to make sure you have everything, but then you forgot something. Or you need to, you know, get out. You try to get into any of these places, and it, it's crazy. I have gone out a few times on Friday after Thanksgiving, and I have not got back in at least like three or four hours. Usually it will take me 30 minutes. Trying to get anywhere is ridiculous. Trying to get anything is ridiculous. Amazon and is your I'm friend. Hopefully, well, that's what I'm hopefully now. We're moving everything online. Stay home, shop online, be like everybody else, and just veg out. For our, our listeners, anyone who's listening, nothing in this world is worth trampling someone for. Please be safe oh, just, yeah. uh, on Friday. Have you seen, I mean, I, I don't know, it's only been recently, like within the last 10 years. But these people who get to these stores, you know, they, 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 they start camping out the, before Thanksgiving. And then when the, when the doors open on Friday... People are getting run over. People are getting trampled. There's people getting shot in some places. I mean, you know, there's, there's fights 
over toys and stuff. You see this, usually it happens around Walmarts. Maybe it's just, you know, that particular store. Uh, I don't see it in any other types of like Bed Bath & Beyond, right? Does anybody raid Bed Bath & Beyond? I've never heard see... of someone raid a Target like that. <laughs> right, no Target or Target, right? Uh, but it's always, it's always at the Walmart. You know, maybe maybe if we're in the 1920s, it would have been the Woolworths. I don't know. But, <laughs> the Woolworths. <laughs> well, I, I get that off of um, uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? You remember yeah, that? Uh, yeah. that like the, they had the Woolworths. And stay out of the Woolworths. Stay out of the Woolworths. <laughs> did, did he <laughs> mean that store or the entire chain? <laughs> stay out of the Woolworths. He got banned from the Woolworths. I just thought that was funny. Woolworths. We actually had a Woolworth when we were growing up in England. It went out of business, though. So it was a, I don't know whether it's an American business, but it was exported. We did have a Woolworth. But anyway, that's my um, uh, soliloquy about Thanksgiving. Anything to add, Anthony? No. He's asleep. We well, him. let's move into one of our topics then. Carrying off from the, uh, the speak like a robot uh, thing you brought up, the power of the Daleks was the first appearance of the second Doctor uh, of Doctor Who. The, fir the, fir the first time we'd ever seen regeneration and the departure of... Uh, what was the actor's name? I don't remember, sir. Did you say Dalek? Dalek. Dalek. The Daleks. They in, so they always say in England, it's the Daleks. Maybe it's just the American accent. I don't know. Yeah, possibly. I'm I'm going off what I always heard in the show. <laughs> well, again, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I have a Texas friend, and whenever he tries to listen to a British show, he can't understand them. Well, it's a different <laughs> it's a different dialect. I mean, there are different oh, yes. ways of pronouncing words. They're all spelled the same in most cases, but oh, the, the the inflection the most most Americans cannot pr pronounce Worcestershire. Yeah, yeah. They, every, whenever they got a Shire on the end, Lincoln Shire, they always emphasize the Shire, which is not the emphasis. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. I know I had a, the first time I, I watched Doctor Who, I had a hard time trying to piece together what they were saying, both with the, the differences <laughs> in pronunciation and the differences yes. in vernacular. They use different words to well, mean different things that I've never heard before, and it took two or three seasons for some things to finally make sense. <laughs> the thing about it is, the early, the early, I mean, this was in the 60s, black and white, they had the proper British accents, you know, the ones that you hear, the Queen, and so forth. Once you get into, like, the 70s and the 80s, then you hear some of the London dialects creeping in with Sarah and uh, some of the, uh, you know, some of the other... Uh, uh, you know, sidekicks that he has. And then when you get into the new, what about, um, I mean, the, the, the doctor, the, the, the one that they, re, re, you know, started in nineties, what is, what of his name is, um, Christopher Eccleston, Christopher Eccleston. I mean, he does not have a British proper British accent, right? But they gave that doctor, and now, what, now we have a Scottish accent. So now they're moving into different dialects, but they, I mean, when they, when they begin, I, I would imagine if you're in another country, even if, especially if it's you don't know English and you say English is your second language, it must be very difficult to try to pick on the idioms that English have. That's their... exactly what I was talking about. Yes, I would I would imagine. But this, uh, what I'm talking about, the power of the Daleks. Yes. Uh, as I said, I've got the. It was the first appearance of the second Doctor, Patrick Thur Thur Thurton. I think that's right, Thurton, and. The it, it was a six episode arc introducing him and kind of reintroducing the Daleks. The, what's significant about this uh, this arc is that it was among the hundred or so episodes of Doctor Who that have been lost over the decades. Oh, well, they found it. No, they didn't. They have the original audio, but they lost the video. So what the BBC has done is recreate the entire six-episode run in animation. Oh, well, that's interesting. As a way to to re to to bring it back and and recreate what was lost, and I think that's a really interesting idea. 
I understand the BBC had a lot of those kinds of problems where they just got rid of TV episodes that they weren't going to worry about re-airing. I guess they really didn't think about reruns. Yes, I would imagine. It's kind of like comic books from the 60s, right? You didn't, you didn't think that they were going to become collector's items in the 90s and the, uh, the, the aughts, right? Yeah. So you just threw them away, you know? It's amazing. And that, what about um, um, uh, the, 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 the one that's the... Um, Oh, I forget the name of it now. Is the one that with the Muppets, Jim Henson and his science fiction one did down in Australia. This, the um, oh, I forget. Uh, I'm not sure. But, but it, it, it was the you know it wasn't the Muppets, but he it, Jim Henson did that science fiction show on on sci-fi, um, with the uh, the ship Moyer and um, uh, Farscape. Farscape, thank you. Uh, they lost all the HD for that stuff. Oh wow! So. That, yeah, anything that you see is on DVD, it's not HD. When it's on TV, it's not HD. They lost it all. Now, again, again they probably, I don't know how they lost it. Maybe it was the transition from, from the United, uh, Australia to the United States, but they lost it. So it's not in HD anymore, and you can't get it in HD, and they can't transfer it to HD. So don't buy, try to buy a, a, a Farscape HD because it doesn't exist. Well, a lot of the stuff that's been lost from, from Doctor Who, a lot of it has been resurfacing both in audio recording but also in fan video recording. That's good. Also from uh, tapes sent to what affiliate stations in like uh, uh, Africa and Asia and places like that in the, the old British Empire. <laughs> yeah, but where did, where did the fans get it? Did they record it some fashion? This is uh, before I, VCRs. I assume so. Uh, they... Well, they had reel-to-reel -reel recorders. So they got the audio recording. They didn't get the video recording. Though. That's the case with the Power of the Daleks. Okay. Uh, they just took been... video, the audio recording from the TV, I guess. They did. A, Fathom Events did a screening of uh, Power of the Daleks on the 14th of this month. And I think you can find it now on... On Amazon, IGN rated it as an 8.2. Both the the original voice acting and the the animated recreation. It's it's not it's not Disney animation. It's very it's not even Cartoon Network animation. It's very uh, bare bones kind of animation. <laughs> uh, is it like? Um... It's it's above motion comic, but not quite. Uh, so it's not, it's not South Park. Yeah, it's a little. It's just under South Park, I'd say. C Lab twenty twenty one. See, South Park to me is very bare bones. I mean, the mouth. I mean, it's not really cartoony. It's just I don't know. South Park is very strange. Think C Lab twenty twenty one or the first season of Archer. Okay, C Lab twenty twenty one. I didn't watch Archer. I was, but I was also thinking, why didn't they do it in puppet form like they did with the uh, the Thunderbirds? You know, that would have cost a lot of cash. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe. But, I mean, that's what they, they – I mean, again, I don't know how big the Thunderbirds were over in here. In the United States – in England, the Thunderbirds were big. They had it on every Saturday and one of those cartoons or those shows you watched and it was puppets and <laughs> – it's cheesy. You look back at it now, it's very cheesy. But it was well-written. <laughs> well-written shows. But, I'd have to go back know, and watch it. But anyway, that's interesting. I didn't know that they uh, were trying to do that with um Are they going to try and do that with all of them? Or are they going to try to just do the ones that they've missed? The articles I found bit? don't say, but if this is as much as a, a success as I hope it is, I would, I'd expect that they do it with some of the other audio-only uh, recoveries they have. Okay, good. Nice piece of information. I'll have to yeah. see that. Are they going to release it on the BBC? Uh, I believe it is airing on BBC, and they should be releasing it for digital soon as well. So it should be coming to a BBC America pretty soon, then? Yeah. Okay. In between their TNG marathons. Well, I, you know, what they've been doing on BBC America is they've been running old Doctor Who. Uh, on Saturday, I watched Tom Baker. Uh, well, I didn't watch all of it because, again, it's, I go back and watch those old – I like Tom Baker. Tom Baker was the, the Doctor Who that I grew up with. But, you know, Sarah, the, his, his uh, longtime partner in that? Yeah. I, I just – I'm like, she's either overacting or she's not 
she's not a very good actress at the time. <laughs> That's a possibility. I, I'm just, I'm just, she's like, she's, her, her voice is, I'm just, she's always trying to be this emotional. I mean, Tom Baker's fantastic. He's, he's, he's quirky. He's funny. He's got the little twinkle in his eye. He, he's funny as hell. And he's, you know, he's doing all this stuff, running around. I look at the sets and it's cheesy and all that. But her, I can't, I don't like her. I, I, her, when she was that, I don't like her anymore. I did when I was a kid. But I look back on it now, I'm like, oh, no, because now I see what other sidekicks he's had, and they're a lot better than her, unfortunately. Well, that does happen. Yes, unfortunately. So moving along, uh, have you are you familiar with Frank Herbert's Dune? Or Anthony, I've read, anything to yes, add? I, I've read. I've not read. No. I've not read. <laughs> Anthony, he's just he's just coming along for the ride. I'm just chilling. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm. Let's put it this way. You guys are driving a car. I hook my wheelchair up to it, and I'm just coasting. <laughs> well, if you have anything to add, feel free to chime in. Of course. I'll just beep, beep, and then I'll say something. <laughs> uh, so I, have will read, you I have read, I have read uh, Frank Herbert's Dune series all the way through the final chapter. I have not read his son's appended, you know, his addendums to this. He wrote some with his son, and then his son continued on. I've not read any of his. There's like 20 novels covering the entire G G Dune genre. I've only read the first five novels. So I've read these first five novels up through the final chapter. As have I. Yeah, I'm a huge Dune fan. I remember picking up the book shortly after watching the sci-fi miniseries uh, in the late 90s. Fell in love with the book, read the others. It's it's a wonderful story, and the reason I'm bringing it up is that Legendary uh, Pictures, the same company that did the Warcraft movie, has acquired the rights for Dune, the entire series, both the original Frank Herbert and the expanded Brian Herbert series for both television and film. Right. It's interesting. I've just read an article, and again, there's no way saying this is going to happen, but what this uh, author was uh, suggesting was uh, doing it in a different because Dune is very hard to put onto screen. It's a great book. As we saw in the 80s. But the prose, like they say, is very verbose. There's a lot of description. You can't really p translate that to the, yeah, the, the 80s. There's movie. a lot of soliloquy. There's a lot of right. just the characters talking to themselves. Right. And that's, you know, you can't really put that on screen. The 80s movie was crap. I, I won't say it's entirely crap. The visuals, the, the, first the visuals part is were not. gorgeous. The, the first part was not. The setting, the, the, everything but, seems so true to the source material. And I don't, then I, I, they no, get to the a wording, the, word, the wording, the, 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 the using the word and stuff. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like the way that they did that. It wasn't magic. It wasn't, it wasn't anything that it was. It was, it was a technique that they were learning. I mean, for me. When they were talking about the Atreides family, they were, I mean, you had basically, let's set up Dune for those people who haven't read it. This is set thousands of years in the future. Human race Earth, have spread out it, from the it's Earth. It's so far in the future, Earth right. we is don't even know where forgotten. Earth is. Right, we don't know where Earth is. So now what you have are these feudal families now. Think of Hatfields and McCoys with five more families on there, or, you know, whatever. Think they Game of Thrones really in space. Get exactly. You, this is, you know, Game of Thrones is, you know, came after this, but yeah, perfect analogy, because this is feuding warlike families going to war, and there's one planet called Dune, where they can get access to this material called spice, which gives access to the ability to transfer from one location to, of space to another. It it's is the only the way basis, that they can do that. It is the basis of all civilization that it's also so far in the future that mankind has fought and survived a war against machines and as such outlawed the use of computers right. and overly mechanical technology right so humans and the human mind has to make up that that gap and spice is what allows that to happen right so they have you have two parts of the human one 
uh, what we call the uh, I think the like star masters or star pilots or something like that. They the take navigators. Spice. Navigators, thank you. They take spice. It mutates their bodies to such an extent that they have to live in this fluid. But they're the ones that can actually warp space and transfer one one ship to another. They pretty much control commerce throughout this because they can control how much they're going to charge. The other ones are the mentats. They take spice and it enhances their brain capabilities they'd be basically become human machines human calculators doing fantastical you know uh, you know calculations in a split second you know like machines did the so core anyway, of the story the, sorry well the yeah, core of the story focuses around arrakis the only planet in the known universe that has that contains the spice and it is the control of arrakis that fuels the narrative of this story where uh, house atreides where the, our main character paul is the heir of of that house and they are given uh control of arrakis uh over their rivals house harkonnen and they have to maintain control of arrakis and meet the emperor's spice quotas house, house harkonnen is not just angry but jealous that that the atreides have been given it and their control has been taken away and there's a lot of political intrigue and maneuvering over who over gaining control, as well as further machinations. Out of almost anything I've read and watched in my relatively short life, the Baron Harkonnen is by far my favorite villain. He is unredeemed. He is vile, and he is evil. And it is so much fun to watch him work. <laughs> you like him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I, it, the Baron Harkonnen is is my ideal bad guy. But how did you how do you think they portrayed him in the movie in eighties in the eighties movie? Garbage, absolutely exactly. fucking garbage. That's what garbage. pissed me off about him. They had this big fat floating blob roaming around with the description on his face, like... of of the Duke in the book. I, I I know it almost verbatim. He was so fat that he could not even support his own body on his own legs. He has to get around on a, of a hover harness that he usually conceals with long flowing ropes. His face is so fat, it could be that of a baby's. But in the movie, right. yes, he was fat. Yes, he could barely move. But he was also covered in sores and uh, yes, all sorts like, of other disgusting that? stuff to make him look... Grotesque. Just, yeah. He wasn't grotesque in the book at all. His, no. his soul was grotesque. His... The, his machinations were grotesque. The way that he was, <laughs> See, the Herbert way wrote that the he rope. would lure, he would call upon young boys into his room to rape and murder is grotesque. Right. The thing is, to me, Herbert wrote that character to show the evil side of human soul. This is one side of it. This is one where the hell did with... they get heart plugs from? That was well, not in the book. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know. Again, I, I don't get. That's what I didn't like about. They make crap up in the movie. I like the science fiction, science fi's, um, you know, three episode or three uh, the mini series. Yes, of it. that was beautiful. It, it, it was beautiful. They, again, they took liberties. Harkonnen wasn't depicted as he as he was, but I liked it because it they made it more relatable. They took liberties, yes, but it was true to the source material. It kept right. the spirit and I liked the of story. it. Story. I mean, it was it was it flowed. It was a much more interesting and entertaining something to watch. It was pretty. It and colors. it made sense for someone who hadn't read the book. If yes. you hadn't read the book, the movie made absolutely no sense. And this is what I want to get back to with this, this author that I read. He's like, don't try to recreate Dune. Do what Marvel has done and take portions of their universe, because now they control all of these, this entire universe, and put people into it and make stories from that. So what, have what the, the main have the main story with with Paul and on on Dune, but then have a bunch of side stories. That's what they're saying. Look, you can, you don't try to because again they said you, if you're going to try to just recreate it, you're probably going to fail because it's been done time and time again, and they've had a lot of different directors come in and can't do it. But if they try to do what Marvel and D DC take their material and modify it, maybe not do this with Paul, but take something and just put some put people into the universe and once they're engaged in the universe then come back and try to tell the story
it is a universe I would like to see more of outside of the perspective of the people on right. top. But the problem is if you try to tell Dune as a story from the books, people are not going to be engaged because it's not interesting. Because, again, you've got like these long, long soliloquies and so forth. But if you get them engaged from the start with different characters, and then once they're engaged with it, coming back and you got you got TV and movies now. You could have cross, you could have people watching a movie or TV, and then go to the movies to watch the Paul stuff, and then come back to the TV to watch some characters within that, you know, that setting. I, I mean, think you can I do kinda, a lot of different things now. I think I kind of get what you're saying. Where uh, in Dune, in the book, the story was portrayed almost entirely from Paul's perspective, right? With the exception of the occasional change to the Baron's perspective, so that the, the reader gets an idea of the hints of what's going on along the side. Right. What the what author about chapter of the, what the, what the What the author is trying to suggest, I think, is take a more Game of Thrones approach to the universe yes. and give a lot more voices to what's going on. Right. That's pretty smart. Take Chapter House. All of those female characters who are pretty badass, we don't really get to know them. I mean, these women control men, right? And the Bene Gesserit? The, the Bene Gesserit, right? The Bene Gesserit. You don't really know much about their backstory in from the TV, from the movies. You do in the books. But, again, they've not really tried to put that onto screen. But if you try to tell a story from inside the Bene Gesserit, I think that would be pretty interesting. There is definitely a lot to go on, and the Dune universe is a lot bigger oh, than, yeah. than just whole one universe. person. I mean, you could have a lot of different things with that. that, that and that not just that, now. the time frame that the story covers. I mean, uh, the, uh, what was it? A God Emperor of Dune takes place 10,000 years oh, yes. after the first book. Right. Right. Well, I mean, t t you can't really... Again, that's what they, they had a problem with when they did the TV show, right? The miniseries? Yeah. Because uh, you had the I, first I, one, it covered, and then all of a sudden he's 10,000 years, and you're like, wait a minute, what happened to the 9,000 years they in didn't, between it? They didn't do a uh, a God Emperor of Dune with the miniseries. They only did, oh, they, 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 they oh, combined they, okay, they Heretics and, okay. uh, well, what was the? Dune. The Dune they, they, they did Dune first, and then they did, they combined Heretics and Children of Dune. Right, okay, which yeah. Didn't yeah. exactly work too well. The, uh, the biggest fault with that is I understand why they did it, but L Leto and uh, Ganima, the children of Paul, were supposed to be 8 to 12 years old in the story. But in right. the in the mini series they were portrayed as 18, which yeah, doesn't I mean, quite yeah. fit as well. Well, it's, I mean, they just age them. I don't have a problem with aging them to make the actors. You can't get twelve-year-old actors. Maybe they're not as good, and you know, you want you want people who can actually. Act they didn't want anyone to. Well, well, Haley Joel Osmond's. Yeah, I don't. I don't like. You him. can't say that there aren't child actors because he was. He's proof. But they're not really good. <laughs> I, I mean... see dead people. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting. I I liked. Dune, I, I read it a long time ago in high school, but yes. I, I, I just hope they don't just try and make another movie. I'm hoping that's what they're not going to do, too, because it would it would bomb, too. It wouldn't do very well. But Legendary does have a stake in sci-fi, so we might see it come back to sci-fi, especially now that they're actually making scripted TV shows again. Yeah, right. All right, I think we've uh, beat that one into the sand. Yes. Let's get something that Anthony can talk about. Well, how about Black Panther? Why has it got to be Black Panther? <laughs> Making an assumption. Mm -hmm. So when I saw the cast, <laughs> and as sarcastic as I am normally, anyone who knows me, I saw the entire cast. I'm like, who turned out the lights? <laughs> <laughs> but it is an all-black cast uh, for the Black Panther, so I'm hoping that the writers uh, create a great script and we have a good show. All right, so the confirmed cast for Marvel's Black Panther, Angela Bassett, uh, oh. I hope I don't butcher some of these names, Danielle Kal Kaluuya? Daniel Kaluuya? Okay. Uh, Oa no, Donnie... 
Let's Doria, put it this way. When you can't say the names... Michael B. Jordan, Chad Of American-looking black people. Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Muktia Nyong'o. Duke, uh, Winston Duke and Florence Kasuba. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. It it's it's definitely looks to be an issue to cast, and there are some powerhouses there. Forrest Whitaker, that's gonna. This is gonna be a good film. Well, just because you have a powerhouse, I've seen movies where people brought in big names to try and make it good, and it was still horrible. You know, so yeah, that's I, true. I'm just hoping it's the writers. The actors will knock it out of the park. It's the writers, and that's what I'm hoping. You know, they'll step up, make a great uh, story for all of us to watch. I remember Florence, the the last woman in the lineup. She was in a uh, Civil War. Uh, she she had a a five second appearance where she walks up to one of the agents and stands the guy down and the look in her eye said i will beat you down and you would believe basically, her basically the look that all black kids get when they get in trouble with their moms so yeah she <laughs> she was basically going off of experience well if that's the kind of acting we can expect in this movie i'm really really gonna look forward to it oh yeah but I, and as I said before, the actors are going to knock it out the park. It's just that the writers, I want them to step up. Uh, Angela Bassett, of course, is, is still familiar. Uh, I'm trying to place some of these other actors, but I think it's the the half face uh, way the the pictures are laid out that I can't quite place them off the top of my head. Any insight, guys? <laughs> I know, I like as I've seen a few of them. I did like the you know the screenshot of all the actors, no white people in it, which is pretty good, right? So it's a Black Panther movie. It's going to be in Africa. Not really want to be in black people there. I mean white people there. So, but I again, I I've, 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 I think do they have? I think they've got a good sprinkling of good you know established actors and maybe bringing in some new ones too, people that are they're going to be introducing to. The audience, which is good. I and mean, again, you know, the guy's, I forget his name. It's um, uh, the guy's playing Black Panther. What's his name? Uh, oh, Winston Duke. Oh, I thought it was, um, no, that's, I'm thinking of that Chaitl Elfor. That, that's a different guy. That's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, um, he, the guy who played, um, uh, well, you haven't seen the movie, so you, you didn't go to see. Um, um, Doctor Strange, but anyway, I haven't no, yet. I, no, yeah, I, I, the title L four plays the um, Mordor, uh, uh, whatever his name is, and that's, that's the guy. I always think I'm always seem to think because he's you know he's pretty good and he's an English actor and I, I've seen him in a lot of other stuff and I I know it's not him in Black Panther or doing Black Panther movie, but I, for some reason my mind keeps on conjuring his face whenever I see Black Panther. So okay, just Black put Panther. things in perspective for those who don't know a lot of black actors. Angela Bassett is currently in American Horror Story. And Denai Guerrera is also Michonne in The Walking Dead. So, um, oh. yeah, just put some things in perspective. And everybody knows uh, Forrest Whitaker. Of course. Yeah. So, um, who's also in Rogue One? Do we, uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, and it's sad that it's actually expected that this photo has gotten uh, some criticism from certain individuals. Why? Because it's all black. <laughs> yeah, they say it's pandering <laughs> to a demographic, and it's taking away from other characters and other actors that could do. Uh, also, phenomenal jobs and making excuses oh, that they, they feel threatened. Out of oh, wait a minute! Sort of like cast. the Brady Bunch, the Partridge hey, family. The guy's My playing three sons. The guy's playing Man Ape. Ma, Ma I can't even pronounce his name. He's on the bottom left on the picture that I'm looking at. He was in. Um, he was in Luke Cage, wasn't he? The bad guy, the first bad guy in Luke Cage. Cottonmouth. Yes. 
Looks like him. I'm looking at a different photo. Yeah, so am oh. I. Oh, well, it's it's uh, Maherla Shala Shabzi Ali is what I have on here. Oh, okay. That's his name. Again, I'm woefully mispronouncing his name because I, I don't know how to put all the consonants and vowels together. But, you know, I'm not going to give a lot of precedence to these people getting up in arms saying that it's too black and they need to get let other actors no, no. I mean, this is have a black shot at Panther these shows. Movie in Africa. It's Black Panther. In Africa. Yeah. It's... What are you going to do? Hire a no, white guy to I be mean, the this, Black Panther? It's like Luke Cage. Luke Cage is African-American. It's going to be in Harlem. It's like a new place in Harlem. Sandwich. Oh, I don't get it. I mean, you've got enough white actors. You've got enough white TV shows. People like the, well, before we knew what Cosby was, they like Cosby. They like good times. Come on. Get over it. Go see the movie. Right? It's going to be good. <laughs> I know. It's a superhero it movie. It's going it to be good. It is going to be good. See, they were up in arms over Luke Cage. He is in the movie. The Tyke Lolfo. He's going to be Brother Voodoo. And then, and now they're up in arms over this cast of the Black Panther. Everyone's mad because why do all these black people got to be together? I, yeah, I, it's going to be the, it's going to be the very strange. Maybe it's because Hollywood won't let them in other things. It's going to be a Hollywood movie, so I mean, they they're going to let him in. Well, you understand what I mean. Do you remember remember the Oscars last year when they were up I, and on saying not I, one person of color was nominated? I, don't I haven't the watched Oscar, the Oscars, Oscars in. Yeah, who watched? I, the I've, I don't remember Oscars. how long. Well, it is crap, but I'm just saying. Actually, you know, I think the last time I watched it, Seth MacFarlane was hosting. Oscars are crap. I don't care. Who the hell gives a crap? The it's actors. Vote well, no actors. Right? Whoever it is, well, voting on the the, oh, the it's academy. Like, oh, I want to give film. myself an award. Oh, look at me! I've got the award. Oh, how happy me! I've got this little golden man, this golden so, dildo Ross, that I can use on anything else. Ross, the last time I watched it, Billy Crystal <laughs> was hosting. <laughs> well, he's only several times. Which one was it? The first time, second time, the tenth? I time? don't know. It was over ten years ago. <laughs> He's done it for yeah, a while. It's been a while. He's done a lot of it. So moving but along, I, then. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited for this, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, uh, taking a a nod from your message about The Walking Dead, Tell Telltale's season three of The Walking Dead has been announced. Now that's the game. Yes, the good game. Yeah, we just make sure the audience knows because yeah. like, I don't want them saying you guys are dumb because it's like season seven now. So Telltale, for those who are are unfamiliar, is a uh, game developer who produced primarily uh, point and click style adventure games from one or multiple protagonists. Their other games include Minecraft Story Mode. Uh, they've, they're have they in the middle of a Batman game, as well as Tales from the Borderlands. The Walking Dead was one of their first big successes. Uh, it focused around... Uh, the first season focused around... Uh, what was his name? Lee Everett. A, a Georgia man who was on his way to prison when the zombie outbreak happened. He eventually came across a young girl named Clementine, whose uh, parents were missing, and the, seri the first season revolved around them uh, going from one place to another, meeting other survivors, and trying to, well, live in this new zombie world. The first season ended with Lee's death, and the second season picked up with Clementine out on, out on her own. And now the third season is coming with Clementine still in the spotlight. A older girl now, but still fairly young. Have you guys Are you guys familiar with the series at all? I think I've mentioned this. I've never watched the series. I've never played the video games. So no, I'm not familiar with it at all. No, I have, I have not played video games. So, But I do watch the series religiously so that's your religion currently yeah zombies well several of the characters from the walking dead tv series have I made have cameo appearances uh what was his name the 
the recently departed guy. What was his name? Who? The, Who the, one, that, the one that uh, got his head bashed in in the premiere. Oh, you're talking about Glenn? Yeah, Glenn uh, made uh, made a cameo appearance in the first season. Oh, okay, yeah. He died by Negan. Yeah. Death by Negan. Spoilers. Negan? Is that a play on words? Negan. No, that's his name. Oh. But it's well worth a, a look as well as the first two seasons. I really enjoyed the first season. I haven't finished my playthrough of the second but i'm i'm excited to know that the season that the series is continuing uh clementine is a a unique character that's uh, it's, well, let me ask you this it's a video game right how yeah. do you win the first video game i mean usually when you have a video game you progress through a story to get to an ending what was the ending for the first video game are you familiar with point and click adventure games yes that genre this is this is, this is like that where you have a bit more freedom of movement uh, instead of actually clicking on where you want to go, you actually use the arrow keys. It's a very guided and somewhat linear experience with variations on the story based on what choices you make. Uh, that The first season ends with uh, Lee cutting his arm off to keep from being turned by a bite, but ends up getting bitten again, and Clementine puts him down before he turns. Well, that's a very morbid way to end a video game. It's The Walking Dead. Okay, I guess. I'm not sure how so this the second... is what they this does it follow along with the actual TV show? It runs in parallel. It is a story that is on its own that doesn't it uh, touches so did Clementine on it briefly. Put this guy down in for real, in for real in the movie in the TV show. Uh, there is no there is no direct crossover. Like I said, there's a couple cameos, and they kind of cross paths indirectly there's no they don't uh meet anyone else other than glenn oh, okay it, it's pretty much just the walking dead from a different perspective from so it's a different okay it's a different it's in this it's in the the world but it's a different yes. group if you will yeah okay like I said, I'm not into zombies. I never really liked it, the whole horror zombie the genre. well that's that's because it keeps you up at night no I just don't like it. Mm. I know you like it because you're turning into one, but that's I love that's it. Sort of... Yes, <laughs> it's your brethren. I root for the zombies. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would imagine. I'm like, get them, bite them, bite them. So you think, um, what's his name, Negan? I mean, he's the. I've heard, you know, you can't really progress through life especially if you're watching TV or some kind of uh, media without hearing the word, this guy, I didn't know what his name was, but he's the big baddie on the, on the, on the yeah. TV show. He had the, he has the baseball bat wrapped in the chain or something, right? Uh, it went to Bob Royer named Lucille. Okay. <laughs> okay. So he's named his baseball bat Lucille. Lucille. Yes. <laughs> and he, he goes around bashing people's heads and he with it. killed right? two people. Season seven, episode one, he killed two people, okay. and it, and that's where it just basically gut punched all the followers of that TV show. And he's currently so, trying so, to break Daryl, right? And he's currently trying to break Daryl. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he's gonna de ultimately die, though you would think, right? Every man dies. Not every man really lives. <laughs> oh God. What's that from so, uh, Die Hard? Braveheart. No, die. Braveheart. Braveheart. So, Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 3 hits stores February 7th of next year. That's good. And usually with these games, uh, they re after uh, it's been out for about a month, they release each... Uh, they call them seasons because they're episodic games. They release about two to three hours worth of an episode every, uh, every month or so. Every Every couple weeks. So you'll have a game to play over an extended period of time throughout the season. Okay. And after about a month or so, after they get to about episode three, they release they release the first episode for free. So you can play the first episode of The Walking Dead first uh, season one and season two right now, as well as most any of the Telltale games. Interesting. 
Before we so, move on to one of your on your list, has anybody been? I know you, uh, Ross, you you can't really keep up, but the TV shows. I mean, I like George, Flash, Supergirl, Arrow. Anybody is up to date with those, or is yes. anybody here behind? Yeah, no, Ross probably behind, right? Yeah, I did just get the CW app so I can catch up on Supergirl a bit for the latest season. Okay. I still have a lot yeah, of catching up Supergirl to do with Arrow and the Flash. I watched yeah. Arrow yesterday. I watched Supergirl on Monday. Well, I was just thinking because I mean they've got the crossovers coming up next week, Ross. So very cool. I mean that's where they're going to start these crossovers. But uh, so you did. I, I want to get to Anthony because he's been known that he said he's he's tired of the Flash. Right? Absolutely, be tired of him, right? yeah, absolutely tired. So, you watched this this week's? I did. Yes. Flash versus uh, uh, Killer Frost. Yes. Right? wasn't really that good, really. It was I horrible. It was a lot better. Yeah, I know. It should have been a lot better. If you want to kill me, just kill me. So it's kind of, but kind of I reinforced, know you. It's kind of reinforced your your uh, disdain you. for him, right? Yeah, I can't stand them. I I really can't. Who stands there with some crazy ass woman, with a nice uh, <laughs> right. spear, ready to shove it in your heart, saying, "Kill me, bitch!" <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Now. Uh, yeah, that was that was very bad writing, because you know that she's not going to do it. He's the star of the show. He's not going to die. Right. It was. It was. It, there's no. There's no see, would have been better if she had managed to escape and she was roaming around this facility and they were trying to catch her knocking around using some kind of uh you know neural neural neuralizer on her to knock her back knock knock some sense back into her instead of trying to appeal to her because killer frost has no feelings right that's my understanding right. of she's the, the, ice the character cold, right she has You're no feelings cold. so why is he trying to appeal to her feelings I don't know, stupid writers. Because right. honestly, you know, usually, like I said before, you don't stand in front of a crazy person and say, "Go ahead and shove it in my heart," because they will. I, I, you know, I, I was watching. Did you watch Supergirl? Again, I don't want to too many yes. spoilers for Russ. But, but I was watching Supergirl gets captured, trying to save the um, the other uh, the Dixon, Dra da Dixon, Dixon, whatever his yeah. name is. Daxon, right? Monel, trying to save him. Monastat. Anyway, uh, that, that's my well, new nickname <laughs> for him. It's Monastat. Monastat. But anyway, she gets captured, and then she gets a, 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 an ultimatum. We want you to that one where she she overloaded her powers in the first season, killing that robot, and she lost her powers because she over. They wanted to. They put a helmet on her, and she over. They wanted to put her helmet on to overpower, and so. I was like, and she's like, well, you don't do it. We're going to kill Monel. And I'm like, well, Supergirl, yeah, he, he's a, he's allergic to bullets. Okay. And she's like, don't dare him. Don't hurt him. And she does it. And then they take her blood. I'm like, I was like, that's. You know what, what they're going to do with that, right? I, I was like, I, I, I couldn't. I, yeah, they, they already did it. They, they've gone to the, the the Fortress of Solitude to unlock stuff. Right. That's, that's the ending of the show. Because they had Cyborg Superman, whatever his name is. <laughs> Hank Henshaw. Well, yeah, the real Hank Henshaw is now Cyborg yeah. Superman. Right. And he's got a half a half a metal face, and he's gone to the Fortress of Solitude with Kyra, uh, Kira's blood, or Kyra's blood, to unlock all of the secrets. So they're gonna have all of the secrets. And I don't like the actress who's playing Cadmus. She got that creepy grin on her face. She's walking around with this she grin. She scares you. Oh, no, she doesn't scare me. She's just, I'm like, what the hell? Take that down. It's like, you remember uh, um, uh, Full Metal Jacket? With the T.I.? Yeah. Stop, stop smiling. And then he hits him. Continue last. What I want to do with her? Hit her on the left side. Hit her on the right side. Take that yeah, but, smile and, off your and, face. And, yeah, but in Full Metal Jacket, the kid was, uh, you know, he was uh, disabled. Well, <laughs> until... <laughs> no, he wasn't. So... He was not. Wait, the, see, the we, Vietnamese kid, the one that they... They weren't Vietnamese kid. It was, um, it was a big, big white guy in... in Private uh, Pile. Private Pile. Oh, that scene. Because in that right. same movie, there was some kid that was smiling, and one of the soldiers killed the entire family. Well, no, but Yeah, but that's different. I'm talking about when they were in boot camp, the DI. Oh, yeah. The yeah, drill yeah. instructor. 
and he's beat. He's like, take that stupid girl. You, why are you smiling, Gomer Pyle? And he's beating on him, hitting him left, right. <laughs> That's what I want to do. He never hit this him. Woman. He never actually Wait. hit him. Yeah, he did. And he slapped him on the side of the head. Oh, wait, that's right. Yeah. And he kept on knocking his cover off, his hat. Pick your cover up. I mean, uh, to me, that's the best part of that movie. The second half is crap. First half of that movie is, is you know, you know uh, Oscar worthy because it's fantastic. And he did he did all of that online. Anyway, that's that's beside the point. But the thing is, I am i don't know. I mean, they've got good parts to these shows now because I'm liking HR. I'm liking the new guy on... Do you like him? I mean, Anthony? Do I like who? Manel? Manel? No, HR. HR. The, uh, you know, the no, I don't like HR. No, I, I can't <laughs> stand like... I know he's your favorite, but I can't he, stand He is. He's my favorite now. I like I him. was actually rooting for uh, Freeze, the, the, the cold <laughs> chick. I was like, the album, right? Because the more she used to power, and she used to power she used a lot. quite a bit. Yeah. In the beginning of the episode, so she should have turned. Yeah, she would. And gone she evil. Did turn. Right. She was turned. Had her in the right? box. They had her in the box. She didn't turn back. Oh, you. I mean, she said, "Well, please let me out." Oh, you're a little smarter than I thought. I mean, she she turned. She was bad. She was evil. Yeah, but how does she turn good at the end of the freaking episode? I don't episode? know. I don't, I don't understand what, that. Right? I don't either. I don't either. That's what gets me about You know, it's the that. only thing that went through my mind is when she hugged him. I was think I was thinking I bet his pants him. were getting a little tight. Oh, <laughs> I thought when she kissed him and turned him blue, I thought she's she gonna... pretty hot. <laughs> she kissed him and turned him blue. It's <laughs> like yeah, he, kill him he now. got hard all over when she did that. <laughs> right. right, but yep. anyway, to me, you know, this the uh, the Flash. I'm again. The writers the, um... are horrible in that TV show. Well. They're, they're not having a good way to work their relationships in. They need to just drop the relationships and stick to yes. the superhero story stuff. And it's the same thing with the, uh, the oh, you know, the Supergirl. You've got Guardian on there right now, right? And um, with Jimmy Olsen. He's a dick. <laughs> He's a stupid idiot. Right? <laughs> I mean, the guy, he's running around. He shoots some guy with a lasso, and he gets ro you know roped up, and then he's hanging upside down. Oh, I guess you're just going to have to hang around. And then he takes off. He didn't wait for the cops to show up to take him into custody. He just thought, oh, he didn't leave note where the cops – he didn't say, I'm going to call the cops now and let the cops know that there's a bad guy there. He just takes off, leaving the guy hanging upside down. He could have had an aneurysm upside down. Instead, he gets shot by the other hey, Anthony. vigilante. Hey, What's Anthony. Up? As a martial artist expert, what do you think about his choreography? Is he any good? Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. If he had any color belt on, I would take it away and give him a white belt. That's what he is. He's a white belt. Hey, you don't know crap. You're 25 But no, you're white right. Belt, he right? left the dude hanging. And then yeah, some other guy comes up and shoots him. Right. And then he has to go, well, then, then they blame it on him, uh, Guardian, because that's who they have it on. Because they have video, but they don't have the video of the other guy. I'm like, okay, you have video of Guardian shooting this guy. But he, but it, from that angle, the, he didn't. You just see Guardian driving away. But, but then they, they don't have the video of the, the guy getting shot. They just have the guy with the gun. Now, they have a video of Guardian. They know he doesn't have any guns on his arms. So they don't have any MDC because I mean they're, they're pretty high tech videos, right? Right. They weren't grainy, so you could look at the video and say, "Oh, he's shooting him like he's got a machine gun strapped to his arm." That's what he sees on the video, and you say, "Well, that's not Guardian because he in that video he doesn't have any guns strapped to his arm." Well, he gets what I like for the, about the it, murders, though, so he has is to go he's walking around. Oh, yeah, the Guardian helped out. I ain't the guard. oh, Guardian. Yeah, Guardian's crime, oh, right? God. No, the Guardian is wanted for murder. No, he's not. Yeah, he right. is. Look at the video. The only, the, only, the, only tr the only true guy in that is the editor for the news part. He's like, what, what, what are you, right. uh, sucking up to the superheroes now? He's like, what was your, what, your objectivity? All I see was a guy getting shot. I mean, he was the only being, he, he's a nasty, mean guy, the real guy there. Oh, <laughs> so he's funny. the only guy true to his job. Oh, I'm like, and the, yeah, uh, Jimmy Olsen, now that he's in charge, he's like, oh, isn't Guardian great? Isn't Guardian good? I mean... Be more sympathetic and oh yeah, look. And then the other guy, 
uh, what's his face? The guy who made the suit. He kind of shut up. He told. He tells Supergirl's sister, "Oh, right? Jimmy Olsen's Jimmy Olsen's the Guardian." Now you I mean, didn't this, hear this from me, is... but Jimmy Olsen is a Guardian. Now you can't tell nobody that. Right. I'm like, but oh, he's you gotta be kidding me. Does he I mean, actually do any good as the Guardian? Well, not so far. He's ca he caught a couple of guys. No, no, no. Is no. there any he's caught points a... to him being the Guardian? No. Right now. No. Then why the hell did they do this? Because on the CW, everyone is a superhero. Everyone. They, they, they don't, they got, uh, Jimmy Olsen Cat Grant is a superhero? Well, she's not yes. on the show anymore. I know. <laughs> she's she not, didn't she, want to move to Vancouver. She's not, so. not there yeah. anymore. They have to have a reason for Jimmy Olsen. Jimmy Olsen is redundant. Otherwise. Pretty much. He doesn't need to be there. He can go back to Go uh, not Gotham, uh, Metropolis, Metropolis with with Super Superman. That's where he needs to be because that's his story arc with Superman. So anyway, I don't know. It's 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 very weird. Now, I I, I want to point out something. So when Supergirl was getting beat up, she landed on something. It had a number four in a circle. And I don't know, if maybe I'm reading too far into it, but sort of reminds me of the Fantastic Four. Did you guys? I did not see uh, that. Did, did you see that? I did that? not see that. Yeah. Well, you understand everyone could beat up Supergirl, right? So she's getting a butt kick and she lands on the ground in a circle with the number four in it. That's the and wrong I know, universe. Uh, I think that's Marvel, isn't it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, mean, I think it matters to the DC. I don't care. It, it matters if they don't have the <laughs> rights to the characters. What are they going to do? Sue me? Cease and desist? Yeah, I'm going to have Marvel, uh, DC fighting Marvel. All right. So that'd, be, that'd be a fight I want to see. So up next, are you guys familiar yeah. with the, the old TV show Lost in Space? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. How about the, I that, the that's rerun. a show where no, there's no black my time, people on it? Maybe reruns. we should complain. How about the uh, the movie remake in the early '90s? Crap. Yes, yes, I see it. With so Joey you, from Friends. Yes. Are yeah. you familiar with the Netflix reboot that's coming up? No. Yes, with Parker Posey. Yeah, that's the announcement I was getting into. Parker Posey's been cast as Doctor Smith. I like Dr. how it leads Smith. up to this, and then I just swooped in and took away its thunder as dr smith that's a strange that's strange she's gonna be What's playing parker, the bad guy t tell me I, I try to refresh my memory who's parker posey what's she been in uh her credits include uh mascot and never columbus never heard of it what do you mean cafe society uh, also, a crap ton of low budget films. Okay, I'm trying to picture her. Okay, well, uh, you know, I've, I've obviously I can't because I don't remember her. That's fine if you want to play, play her as the bad guy. That's I don't have a problem with that. Recasting the Doctor Smith as a bad, uh, as a woman. It's fine with me. Link in the chat room. Okay, but that's interesting that they're not afraid to gender swap a couple of the roles and make it their own. It, it oh, really... I've seen her. She was um. She was the um, on on uh, Superman versus um, Batman. She was the um, uh, what's his name, the 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 wife, the 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 girlfriend of um, Lex Luthor. Was she on DC, Was she on Superman versus Batman? I have yet to see the movie. He didn't have a <laughs> girlfriend. Well, not a girlfriend. The 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 the, the, the love interest. Maybe I'm blanking. Different. Anyway, uh, this I think this bodes really well for the series and that Netflix is going to do a really good job with it. Netflix, yeah. Netflix would. I, I agree there. I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to seeing their take on it. With it. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger. Ho hopefully <laughs> they keep to uh, the the early Lost in Space versions of it where Dr. Smith was actually the antagonist intent on killing the entire family instead of the lovable Oath who, who was a uh, comedic relief. It's interesting, though. So that's the only one they've cast so far? 
That's the only one they've announced so far that I've found. Mm. So they haven't they haven't announced the um, the family Robinson yet. Not yet. As long as they don't put Joey from Friends on there. <laughs> so uh, if, if you guys got nothing else on that. No, I mean, um, as far as I mean, that's an old TV show, wasn't that in the sixties, fifties? Yeah, in nineteen sixty-five. Star Trek. So yeah, it's it's in that genre of Star Trek. Um, like I said, the 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 original no, the originals. I mean, the the remakes. He that that character was probably the best, interesting, most interesting. He was a bad guy because he's always trying to get one over. But he, from just watching it, he was probably the most interesting of all those. The Robinsons were all too Americanized, if you will, at the time. Oh, yeah, they're all good. They're nice. They're this uh, good family values, right? Even though no, nobody lived in a family like that. So it was kind of serialized and, um, uh, you know, put into this uh, pedestal of American, Americana. He was, the ba he was the guy that was always trying to get one up, trying to get over, trying to get something else. And he played it. He played it to the hilt. I forget the actor's name. If she can do, obviously not like him, but because I did. Who played it in the movie? Was it Gary Sinise? I well, British don't actor. know off the top of my British head. Actor uh, who remember. plays um, who played not Voldemort. He was play, He played. Um, he was on the. Um, I forget his name. Shit. Because I remember him now. I can see his face. He was in um, Prisoner of Azkaban. He was the. He was the prisoner from Azkaban. Oh, I don't know he's if the guy that played Sirius the, Black. Sirius Black, yeah, he played him. He was in the movie. He was he was the uh, he was he was the professor in the in the movie for the Lost in Space. So, but um, he, again, he, that, cool. he, he, that 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 character is really the only one that I've really liked about that show because that's the interesting character. He's the guy that has the faults. He's the guy that's really like the most human. All the other ones are just way oh no you, nobody's like that nobody actually believes that nobody actually thinks like that cuz i mean everything else they try to make them you know these super super americanized people which nobody was and nobody is so yeah interesting hopefully her take on it will be something similar it's interesting that they've actually turned it and that she's actually going to have a female villain if if she is going to be the villain maybe they have somebody else as the villain well, she is Dr. Smith. If they're following at least the template of the original, she's going to be at least one of the antagonists. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, though. Very interesting. Especially if it's on Netflix. Cause if they can do a, a, you know 13 episodes, I think they'll do a bang-up job of it. I plan on doing a rewatch, well, for me, a, a, a first viewing of Lost in Space with the author of the biography of Lost in Space, Mark Cushman. Oh. He and I will be watching the episodes and then discussing them and... Uh, talking about different key points of the making of each episode. The originals? Yes, the originals. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's going to be on your podcast? It's going to be on my channel, yeah. Okay, good. It'll be interesting to listen to. So, in other casting news, uh, for Star Trek Discovery, Michelle Yeoh has been... Uh, is, has been... Uh, it's not... Un has been announced as a yeah, cast member, but it's... Really you're Skyping so bad. Hello? You're Skyping Hello. bad. You're Skyping really bad. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Am I good? Yes. Yes. We yes. can hear you. You were Skyping. Okay. So Michelle Yeoh, uh, po uh, from uh, what most well known in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, has been cast allegedly in Star Trek Discovery. I saw George chatting about this, going all freaky beaky about it. So the the argument between me and George there is that he, uh, in every news outlet that I've seen uh, report on this, they're all saying that Michelle is going to be the lead and that she'll be headlining it. If not as the, the main character, then as the Discovery's captain, since the Discovery's uh, story will focus around a lieutenant commander. He says that that's not going to be the case because she doesn't have... Uh, her roles so far have all been supporting. She hasn't been in a primary role since Crouching Tiger. What's that got to do with it? Uh, I, whatever. This is what I hope for Michelle Yeoh. Every movie I've seen her in, you know, it's always subtitled. Is there either speaking Cantonese or Mandarin? Now, when they do this uh, Star Trek show, I want her speaking 
Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a Everyone else so, is speaking English. So she he's speaking got me Mandarin, and it's subtitled. That's it. I don't want her to speak in English. I really don't. Has, have you heard her speaking English? No, never, ever, and never ever. I really don't care. Well, never stop. She can speak Chan. English. Should have chopped Jackie Chan. I'm be not better. saying. I think I'm he, not he saying be she can't in, uh... speak it, but I just want her to speak in Mandarin. <laughs> or well, this that excites me a lot because she's a she's a pretty big name. I mean, granted, not as big as as other actors who've done Star Trek, but she's she's a very solid cast member. And I'm hoping that if she's not the lead, she's the captain. She needs. You've got to understand. Who did they have? Who did they have for the first captain of um, Voyager? She dropped out after she started filming. Yeah, she that French the, actor. The French actor. Yeah. I can't remember her name, but I've seen the test footage. But she, what I was she, going to say out. is when Patrick Stewart was being casted, even Gene Roddenberry was fighting against it because no one knew who he was. He was just some Shakespearean actor. With a bald head. With a bald head. Who wasn't head. entirely convinced that the show would be successful. <laughs> True. <laughs> right. But he did it anyway. Well, yeah, he's a professional. The money's right, and he, had to, he got to live in L.A. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> From London, which is a nice... Right. <laughs> So he's like, yeah, so, I get to live in see, L.A. London or L.A.? Year. London or L.A.? Yeah, I get to live in L.A. for a year because he thought this show was going to fall and fail. He did, what, 20 episodes, and that's it. Back to London. <laughs> he's there for years. thought he stayed in L.A. Yeah. for a long time. Well, yeah, well, obviously, but he was back and forth after that. Once, once Star Trek, because he was back on uh, uh, um, West End doing some plays and stuff once uh, Star Trek ended. Yeah. Yeah, that one man, because um, he loves Sh uh, Dick. Yeah, Dickens, right? Christmas yeah. Carol. He loves that. This is one man Christmas Carol. <laughs> I have the DVD of his version of the Christmas Carol, a full production, not not a one man show. Right. I, yeah, I've seen it with a full production, but the one man show, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. He even he even did a couple uh, BBC TV series. Uh, and yep. a version of Hamlet with uh, David Tennant. Yep. So he's pretty, I mean, that, pretty much it put him on the map as an actor. Right. He could do whatever, right. The hell, do whatever the hell he wanted after that. And he is, because so, currently he's doing Blunt Talk. Oh, I've forgotten about that. that. I need to look that up. Yep, Blunt Talk. What's that? It's, he's uh, a Fox he's a News newscaster, style. Right? Yeah. Oh, Fox News in England? Like a or Bill O'Reilly. America. Oh. Is it just an American accent? No, nope, British accent. I was going to say, his, his, I don't think his, his American accent's not that good. It's horrible. I know, right? Hey, so, it can't some be English any worse ever. than his Texan. Well, yeah, but I guess he's an English actor. He's, he doesn't... I mean, like, exactly. I mean, uh, uh, you, again, you haven't seen um, Doctor Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch does a passable English American accent, but it is noticeable in certain parts of the movie, especially if you're looking for it. Now, again, he, he obviously worked on it, but he, he does a passable, and it's not great, but it's not bad. I mean, you think about some horrible Brit American actors doing English accents or English actors doing American accents. There's been Hugh some Jackman. bad ones. There's been some good ones, right? So. Uh, Hugh Jackman, the guy that played Agent Smith. Um, who else? Who else? My, my favorite, well, the, is uh, Kevin Costner's Robin Hood. <laughs> he didn't even worst. try. No, he didn't even try. He never even tried. I mean, that was just. The well, worst. my favorite was actually Braveheart, where first he's speaking with a Scottish, uh, a Scottish accent. accent, then he's speaking American. Let me go yeah, and Australian. Then, and then he's talking Australian. Then a car drives oh, by. Yeah. You see, have you seen the big the big fight scene when a car drives by? There's a dog turd in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a big fight scene, and then this little white car car is driving by on the road while these. How funny! These... <laughs> and they put it in the movie. It's the movie. <laughs> well, there's a scene in a Brad Pitt movie where um, I think it's Troy, where an airplane is flying in the sky. Right. Troy was an absolute disaster. Right. Oh. I love that movie. The best fight scene in the world was with Achilles and Hector. 
mess. What about the, you remember? Gladiator, yes, but it was right? one big homoerotic mess. Yeah, yeah, I didn't like it. Oh, you, see, you know what? Don't get so uncomfortable. That's how it was with Greece. <laughs> they were man lovers. How do you know? Were you there? Yes, you know, I he's, was. Yeah, it's been reincarnated. I'm reincarnated. <laughs> Do you have you seen Gladiator, right? Your big car yes, the I chariot, have. Yeah. The big, the, yeah. There was one where the chariot gets flipped on its side, and you one, one, they had this covering where they had the, the canister that would flip it. It falls off. The chariot's running away, and you see the canister on the cart when it's not supposed to be there, and it's in the movie. <laughs> it's plain as day. You can see it. It's the canister that flipped it, and it's there. You can see the the the, the mechanical me mechanism that flipped the cart, the chart. The, the the chariot and I was like wow that and they left it in the movie because they uh, only had one shot I guess. Do you, uh, did you guys see Evil Dead two? Yes. Uh, there are so uh, it's it was so low budget that they they couldn't help but leave a whole bunch of glaring uh, errors in like one shot where they're shooting up where the old lady in the fat suit is is digging into Ash's head. You can see the rafters in the gym where they shot this and rebuilt the house and the rip in her costume where it's just flapping open. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. That's the thing about Evil Dead. Even when yeah, it came out in the, in the 1980s, it's a low budget, it's supposed to be fake as hell, but it's supposed to be good. I love hey, it. The original was scary as hell. No, it wasn't. I love that movie. It was awesome. Well, you, well, you, I love, like you love horror movies. movies. Yeah, I do, yeah. You guys like bedtime stories of puppies and baseball. Me, I want you know, No, I, don't, wa I don't watch horror movies. I don't watch horror movies. I do. I love it. Well, you can have them to your heart's content. Thank you kindly. But back to Michelle Yo. I want her Michelle to speak yo, in yo. Mandarin. Michelle Yo Yo. Yo Yo. I want her to speak in Mandarin with subtitles and everyone else speaking English. Well, in other casting news, Amelia Clark, also known as Khaleesi Denner Stormborn. Uh, uh, dang it, I used to know the whole Can you say two paragraph long just name. Learn over it. <laughs> I used to know the whole whole paragraph long name, but you just say Khaleesi. The Khaleesi. She has been Chip cast. With the white hair. Was that it? Yes. Chip with the white yeah. Hair. Yes. She has been cast in the Han Solo solo movie. Yeah, I is saw Han that. Solo? Yeah. Is she Han Solo? She is not Han Solo. Oh, no. see? But I do like Amelia Clark. She's she's pretty awesome. Yeah, she's excellent in Game of Thrones. I really liked her in the last Terminator movie as Sarah Connor. That's the only places I can think of her though. Do you ever did you ever see the interview where she did an American accent? I have not. I totally fell in love with her once. Is that we're on just... that uh, Ed Norton show? That Norton show? Yeah, yeah. And she did the American accent. It was funny as heck. So there's no word on who she'll be playing, but uh, according to Lucasfilm, Clark's role will round out a dynamic cast of characters that Han and Chewie will encounter in their adventures. Well, no, she's not going to be playing. She's not going to be playing in Leia. No. <laughs> I'm going to guess she's going to be an imperial officer. British accent, yes, because they always make the Brits the imperials. Well, that was because the original film was filmed mostly in London, but I know. But the, it's funny how that has now become a stereotype. You need a you need a, an evil guy with uh you know like the Nazi uniforms and so over, make him an English accent, make him an English actor, and you got the you got the bad guys because they can enunciate and you know and uh, everybody else can just fill in. <laughs> but think about it, how cool would it be for her to be Han Solo's antagonist, the officer that's going after him the entire movie, or something along those lines. Could she bring her dragons with her? Probably not. <laughs> But that would be awesome, I'm being though. A dick. I'm being a dick, so yes. <laughs> Anthony, what do you think? About what? It, have, <laughs> Amelia Clark being the bad guy of the movie. I don't care as long as she's in it. All right, then. But she's not gonna be, probably not going to be using an American accent, though. And she's probably not going to be nude. I don't care. I've already seen it. I've already heard it. She's a great actress. And she's a great person to have on the set. One of the funniest things is she was trying to play a joke 
on one of those uh, guys from the Dragos or whatever. And um, and she was laughing so hard. Dude was asleep. And she was trying to put some whipped cream on his hand or on his face or something. She's just a delight to have her around. So, you know what? Keep her in the movie. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see it. So, did you guys see Pacific Rim? I have seen Pacific Rim, yes. Yes, I have. What did you think Watch of it? Watch it for free on TV. It's not, it's not a bad movie. It's I mean, all I, right. I, 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 I wouldn't have play, I mean, I wouldn't have paid full price to go see it in the movies. But it's not a bad movie. Anthony? It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Let's put it this way. I wouldn't spend money to see it. Well, I liked it a lot. I thought it was a it was a fun movie and interesting uh, kind of take on the the giant monster genre. And seeing giant robots fight giant monsters is is just fun, no matter how you put it. Great cast of characters, well rounded that that worked really well. And yeah, I mean, it, it was interesting because you had, like you say, you had the giant the, the the Japanese monster movies, but in this case, you had massive human robots piloted by two humans inside it was interesting and he had to link them up and they had to be so in tune with each other that they had to be able to be in each other's thoughts and part of the movie was you had these antagonists these protagonists where they put one woman in there and she was so bent up on her past that she almost killed everybody when she first got in there because she almost activated the robot and almost blew it up because she was visualizing the attack that basically made her who she who she was. One thing so, yeah. I really liked about the the resolution in the movie is that there was no blatant love interest between them. There were two soldiers who had survived a, a terrible battle and were just thankful to be done. There was no kiss at the end. There was no obligatory love story. It was just two people going through a struggle together. Yeah, I mean, because they always, they always, when they have these men women dynamics in, in war, they always predict, oh, the man's going to fall for the woman, the woman's going to fall for the man, they're going to have sex at the end of it or halfway through the movie. How many women and men, when they're in combat, are actually thinking about sex? You're in combat, you're not worried about getting it up, you're not worried about getting it on, you're worried about surviving, you're worried about the next shot coming at your head. You know, if you're, if you're also in, in each other's homo, head already. Some kind of a, yeah, if you're in some kind of erotic zone, then you don't need to be in combat. So bringing that up because the first set footage uh, from the, the Pacific Rim sequel has been released on John Boyega's uh, Twitter feed in French. Yeah, I can't read French. John Boyega being Finn from Star Wars uh, Force Awakens. He's yeah, French. There's nothing that Google can translate. Yeah, I'm lazy. I'm not going to translate it. Pour un André un petit menu, admire John sur ses nouvelles images. Hashtag BTS du Pacific Rim 2X. There you go. That's my French. Crappy as it is. Don't say actually, too much. Go ahead. No, I actually took French for a year in high school, and I forgot everything. Of it. The only thing I do is count up to 15. <laughs> Not too much to, to glean from these photos. Just John Boyega in costume on the set. A couple cameras in the shot. But it's it's good to know it's proceeding forward. And as far as the character design, it's uh, it's not bad. Yeah, you can't really tell much. He's outside this time, looks like. Most of the it's other a times teaser. it was in Yeah. Most of the other times from the movie was in these dark sets or inside some kind of cave and Or in the middle of Hong Kong at night. Right. So yeah, maybe they had to save save money so they could do them on the set so they didn't have, you know, panoramic views of the skyline because they couldn't afford them. Because they had to save it for the uh, CGI's for the the monsters and the Robots, which are really good. Those those robot fights are really good. Those robot monster fights are really good. Yeah, it was all a lot of fun. Yeah, I thought that was fun. And what was his name? Who did it? He, um, what was his name? The director. Is he do? Is it the same director? I'm not sure. 
Oh, it's, it's John Del Toro, right? Del Toro is his oh, last Oh, Benicio name. Del Toro. Benicio Del Toro. He's the director. I, I love think his he's, work. I think he's producing this one. He's not directing it. Oh, I love his work. Isn't that Guillermo Del Toro? Guillermo, yes. Guillermo Del Toro. Goodness, you guys don't know your people. I know, I don't mind. Oh, if it's Del Toro. I know he's Del Toro. I just know his last name. He's Del Toro. But everyone says Benicio, who's the actor. Yeah, he's an actor. Guillermo. <laughs> who's the, Guillermo the Del Toro. William Del Toro, yes. William Del Toro. Anyway, uh, just a couple things left. <laughs> so there are two uh, big gaming anniversaries uh, this last week. One, uh, the 12th anniversary of Halo. I you guys played that? that game. Well, yeah, I did for like five minutes. Because every time I loaded in, I got headshot. Then I loaded in again, I got headshot. One time I survived. I, you know, I, I ducked the headshot. Then I found the dude, chased him down, tried to shoot him. He's bunny hopping, and he's laughing at me. Then he headshots me. No, I hate that game. Screw you. Yeah, I don't, I don't play. I don't, I, yeah, I don't play that game either. Well, I used to play it a whole lot. I did a lot. Uh, I did a live stream of it on the actual anniversary. Played the Master Chief Collection and went through uh, one mission from the first four games. A lot of fun. A few people joined me. It's uh, Halo for me. It's it's kind of gone along with my career. I remember playing huge sixteen player death matches in the one of the lounges of the barracks. We'd bring a bunch of Xboxes, hook it up to a few of the TVs, bring a couple smaller TVs down so we have enough screens, and we just spend the entire Saturday there. It was a blast. Two yeah, and I three. It. I don't. I, I never got into the uh, the whole. First person shooter. I was never very good at them. Two and three both came out while I was deployed, and uh, for I wasn't deployed for that one, but anyway, it is notable. And the other anniversary is World of Warcraft is fifteen. Again, a yeah. game I didn't play. <laughs> never played it. Well, I did, I take that back. I played it an hour, and then I quit. I played it 11 years ago, and uh, I was like a, he I was a healer, and then they had those death knights, and so I became a death knight, I loved it, so I just played that the rest, but I didn't only played it for less than a year, one time I was in a raid, and it was like a 20 man, I don't know, it was one of those big man raids, and I did something wrong, and someone said, who did it, who messed up? And they said me, and they kicked me out of the raid. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're idiots. You raged I didn't know what I was doing. I, well, I honestly didn't know what I was doing. So. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I never stuck with many guilds. See, that's ridiculous. I mean. Now, not all, all played, guilds are like all, that. We've all played Star Trek, right? And we played Star yeah. Trek before they modernized it and before uh, Perfect World got in there. So we remember the old the old raids, if you will, at the end of the game where you're going the to get the Right, the STFs. These were like six-hour long things. We didn't, I mean, when I do it, we if somebody didn't know what they were doing, we would walk them through. This is what you need to do. This is how you do it. And we'd set them up. We, I mean, I remember being in one from our guild was like, 10, 12 hours. We had people coming in, dropping out, coming in, dropping out. And it was like just trying to get through, trying to get one of our t guild members or fleet members through this damn STF. It was like 12 hours. The ground like, ones were the worst. Right. But I mean, once you got them down, they were fun. And they kind of, as, as, I mean, but from what I've seen and what I've heard from certain, especially in World of Warcraft, people are douches, people are dicks. They kick you out because, oh, you didn't know what you were doing. Well, just tell me what I need to do. Help me. And we'll walk through it. No, they, not kick, they kicked guilds, Anthony out of it. Why did not they kick all you out? Like it's ridiculous. That. Well, I they, didn't know what I was doing, and I messed up. Right. N not but, I mean, all guilds are like that, but unfortunately, that is the stereotype that some guilds It's not will... a stereotype. That thing is for real. I know it's I, for real. Yeah. I've encountered it, too. I was playing last week, and I got kicked out of a... Uh, a dungeon because I wasn't doing the DPS they wanted me to do. It does happen, yes, but it's not the the majority of what happens. You got to find the right guild, and sometimes that takes a little effort, which is more really dots. more more, dots. Eff 
more effort Will than I'm willing to put in. Ross to the middle. More dots. What the f are you doing? I yeah. play Warlock, so yes, I do a lot of dots. Yeah, more dots. But it's amazing that a that a game like World of Warcraft has been operating for fifteen years. When well, yeah, the... it's it's an electronic version of Dungeons and Dragons. If you really think about it, come on. Is it still well, pay to know. play? Yes, it is. You can yeah. play for three so they... up, for free up to level thirty. Okay. Of one hundred and ten. <laughs> so yeah, you know, <laughs> just whet your appetite, and then you got to pay for the rest. But uh, that's what, it's, that's, that's what all the good other... whorehouses do. They lure you in, and then they, they they charge you for the the upgrades. Well, think about other MMOs of its kind that came that came before and about the same time. The original EverQuest declined. I played quite a Ever, bit. EverQuest. I played the EverQuest. Star Wars Galaxy went belly up. Never played that. See, I played that, and uh, a lot of controversy with that game. But, yeah, see, that game came out in 2003. And I started playing it a year later in 2004. And um, very good game. I still think it's one of the best games that was ever made. But they closed the doors when Star Wars The Old Republic came out. So that's why they it went belly up. Well, that and a whole lot of mishandling on Sega's part. Uh, well, EA. EA uh, took the, over. No, of uh, Star Wars Galaxies was Sega. No, EA. The Old Republic is EA, specifically Bioware. I, I beg to differ, my friend. All right, all right. I'll look it up while you talk. But yeah, I played on and off since launch. It's, uh, I remember when it came out. Uh, pretty much everyone in my division on the Los Angeles played together for the longest time. In fact, <laughs> my favorite stupid seaman Bullock story is, is a World of Warcraft story. We're on the ship and we're doing field day. I'm face. Uh, I'm inside a piece of equipment cleaning. Uh, as deep as I can, and we're all talking about the game and what we're who we're playing, what we're playing, what we're getting into, what dungeons, what level we are. And I'm talking with my my chief, my supervisor about it, and he looks at me and tells and says, "You know what, Bullock? You should start a priest." So in my mind, I thought he said I should go and start a priest right now. Mm -hmm. So we got done with field day. I left the ship. I went home and started a priest and got it up to level twelve. Uh, my chief, I, I go to work the next day. My chief pulls me and says, "Bullock, what?" What the hell happened yesterday? Where did you go? I, I looked at him quite seriously and said, you told me to go start a priest, so I went and started a priest. Oh, my. The look well, on his face oh when I God. said that. There was that immediate anger where he was going to start chewing me out, but then he stopped, and I could see his, the gears turning in his head. His mouth kind of moved a little bit as he realized, you know what, I did tell him to do this. I can't really yell at him for doing what I told him to do. So eventually he sighed shook his head and looked back up to me and said, well, what level is it? Just to <laughs> let you know, for Star Wars Galaxies, the developers are Electronic Arts and Sony Online Entertainment. So we were both right. No, you said Sega. Sony. You I said Sony. Sega, Ross. I did say Sega. You said Sega. I know I said Sega. Trying to tell me it was Sega. I don't know. Sega, Ross, Sony, please. same difference. No, it's not. <laughs> I know it's not. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but it, in my mind, it was one of the best games ever. And that was before you could become a Jedi. So I played in what we call the pre CU, because the CU was a combat upgrade. Now, before that, you had like 15 different professions you can be so i was like a tk um oh what was i a swordsman or something like that and eventually the old man came to me the old man came to me gave me my crystal and then i went out then went down the path to becoming a jedi i was a jedi in a pre-cu 
before they did a combat upgrade. When the combat upgrade came, I mean, half the half the people, half the players left, and it just got worse after that. So as soon as you became a Jedi, everybody quit. Yep, I was too powerful. You, you the what? You How long what did called? it take Vader, Vader to find you? Darth Vader. Um, I don't think he ever found me in a pre seal. So we can so, actually blame the collapse on you. You becoming a Jedi yes, caused the Yes, when I became a Jedi, everyone Gallum. left. Yeah, they didn't like I was, I was too We're letting powerful. this guy in? No, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Marv, thank you for joining us. No worries. Just listening in here, actually. Have you got any thoughts on 12 years of Halo or 15 years of World of Warcraft? Halo? I'm very excited about it. I'm very proud of that game. I, I, I uh, knew people who want to develop early development teams uh, uh, for, for Halo uh, back when Bungie Studios uh, first brought it out. Um, as for World of Warcraft, I really couldn't give a rat's butt about it. Well, tell me this. Do you give a rat's butt about Ghost in the Shell? Yes, love Ghost in the Shell. Um, I've, been, I've been watching that ever since... Um, uh, oh, God. Um, Standalone complex, and then all the one that came afterwards. Uh, I, I think I remember almost every subtopic and every long-winded philosophical and scientific conversation they had, almost by heart. Love that series. Have you seen the lo new live-action trailer? I don't feel good right now. I think I need, they need, need to lay down. That that just made me sick. You really think it was that bad? <sighs> Here's the thing. Um. Okay, I understand you've got to like you know you know like divert away from the story a little bit like to, to make it more interesting. But the story itself was interesting w w without having to make um, the major completely you know like completely like you know I don't know who I am. I'm one of a kind. Say what now? N no. And oh, I have no one who loves me. No, so I'm like whoa, 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 f stop. No, that's that's not exactly true. She had, she had a whole. She has a whole family, people who remember and know her, who are in all these connections, like different people, underground people, uh, terrorists, um, people in politics, her old commanders, or people who care about her, but they made her alone. I'm like, going, no, I, no, no. But I'll give it a chance. I'll see what the story's like, and then I'll reserve judgment, you know, till, till after I see it. But right now, not very happy. Not Wait a minute, you see, just said... Did you, you see the shelling no, no, trailer, no. though? And then, I, yeah, I can say no, 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 no. But I'm going to give it a chance, you know, before I go, oh, hell no. I didn't like so, the trailer. His question so it's a trailer, tentative no. Yeah, if the trailer didn't give me, like, you know, a warm fuzzy. I was very, nope, 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 don't like that, nope, don't like that, nope, don't like that. But at the same time, I have been wrong before, like about the, the latest Star Trek movie. I was like, nope, not going to like it. Guess what? I loved it. I was like, damn, this was good. This was really good. So I'm, I'm, I'm holding out. The director, um, oh, God, I forgot his name, but the director, I did look up his IMDb, and he's got some very interesting, um, a very interesting resume. Um, some of the, the, the FX artists from, from Korea. Fantastic! They did some uh, some some independent work on uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, Into the Light, which was a fan based uh, 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 um, live action of Dragon Ball Z. Not the French version, the actual Asian version it was actually very good. I was like, okay, and I was okay. I was impressed. Besides, um, I I liked the visual. The visuals were very good it was definitely our world but not quite as uber high tech as it was in that one it reminded me a lot of blade runner if you will and i was like okay this is blade runner meets matrix okay i can kind of i can kind of get with that so we'll wait see a minute wait goes. a minute blade runner was a classic i mean right. that's classic sci-fi when you look at the visuals in this one, especially with the Yakuza scene, with the like little um, assassin bot when, when she goes in there, you when you look at it, the cinematography is very Blade Runner esque. Um, the lighting, uh, some of the music, and even some of the uh, tonal uh, scene shifts, like when it goes from one scene to the other, it's definitely. I was like, wait a minute, dude, this is 
this is Blade Runner. Now the fight scenes are, are classic um, Japanese, you know, like like, like pre John Woo. Well, actually, during John Woo, uh, as fight scenes. So I'm looking at this. I'm I'm excited to see see that happen. I'm like, okay, this is not bad. But again, it's like it's borrowing, and that's what kind of turned me off. I'm like going, it doesn't have its own feel because Ghost in the Shell, when it came out, there was nothing like it. It was just holy cow, this is unreal. And you watch it, you you got in and you watched it. And also, what I'm going to miss out, I haven't seen anything of the Tachikomas. I haven't seen that. I'm like, going, mm, maybe they're saving the it for the actual movie. Yeah, you know, so I'm going, okay. I would have loved to see, like, you know, just some idea of Tachikomas. I would love to see it. But we'll, we'll see where it goes. We'll definitely uh, see where it goes. And I'm, like I said, the first trailer was not too impressed. Like, yeah. Especially that, that scene fighting in that, you know, ankle deep water. I was like, yeah, final fight scene of Matrix Revolution which, between Neo and, and, and Agent Smith. That's all I got out of that one. I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. What about but the shelling trailer? Shelling trailer. I'm sorry. Is this for, for, I, I haven't seen the shelling trailer for Ghost in the, for, for, for Ghost in the Shell yet. It is which, a shot for shot remake. In live action. Really? Yes. Oh, right, right, right. When she got her body, yes, I did see that. That did impress. I was like, going, dude, they've got the flaking of her uh, protective layer from her skin off. I was like, impressive. That was pretty good. Th but again, like I said, that goes back to the visual effects team uh, that, that they have from Korea and Japan um, doing this film. I was like, going, okay, that was sick. That was really really sick and they they did they did the uh thermograph well sorry the the thermoptics for her uh disappearing and reappearing i was like hmm interesting effect they pulled it off pretty well it doesn't look like she's just fading out it wasn't like you know an upgraded predator effect they actually did the effect where she actually blinks out i'm like okay not bad not bad at all i looked at that but like i said i expected a lot from the F sfx and i saw what i expected so i'm going okay all right. Again, still tentative, but I, I'm waiting to see the movie to see how Scott Johansson pulls off, you know, um, Major Kusnagi. I want to see how she pulls it off. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Will, Anthony, any thoughts? No. Trip, trip, trip. Will? I don't think they've seen the movie. Oh, oh sorry, uh, in, in the anime uh, before. Will I? I thought would watch it because it's very, very highbrow. It, it, it's not like you know, like uh, oh look, I'm a I'm a woman with big boobs and I'm I'm half naked. I'm killing stuff. There was a lot of that, but she is naked killing stuff quite often. I I don't watch anime, and for that, don't what I used to watch was the 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 mainstream ones like Voltron. Uh, Pokemon. And there's one about one with a. Uh, it's in space, but the ship looked like battleship. Oh, space battleship dude. Yamamoto. There were a lot so, of them like that, dude. Yeah. Tiger sharks, uh, space battleship Yamamoto. There were a lot of them that were in space. Um, Captain Hawlock. A lot of them. Super like Dimension that. Fortress Macross. Right there, you go. I don't know. It just looked like a battleship in space, so. I would watch that. That's about it. But I was not into all the 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 anime that's out now. Stuff that you don't you know people never heard of. And I I don't care about the big bouncy boobs or the or the yeah. panty shots or stuff this like that. This is so not like that. This is this is an anime that you would appreciate because it's it, it doesn't rely heavily on we're gonna shoot stuff and show boobs. It doesn't rely on that at all. It it's very carry. Deep. Yeah, it carries a, a very deep story. Someone with your intellect will, will definitely appreciate it. it. It it doesn't speak down to you. It actually does. It, it actually um, tries in a way to shake you loose by 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 some of the topics it goes into. But it's it, it's um, forays into metaphysics, into philosophy, into human psyche, human behavior, in, love, loss, war. It's it's in a lot of sci-fi. In a lot of sci-fi, the most of their stories or their ideas stop at AI, at self-actuating machines, at mm -hmm. self-actualization uh, in computers. What Ghost in the Shell does, it takes it beyond that. 
what exactly. happens when those the, those Lines intelligent programs and humans begin to blend? What happens when they start to grow together and in parallel? Mm -hmm. Like, well, hence the term gulf. The gulf is like, well, like, you know, like gulf in the machine, gulf in the shell, if you will. Um, it borrows on that idea where these machines, and I'm saying machines by everything, humans, androids, everything else, we have people who who are becoming more robotic and then they're afraid of losing their humanity. At the same time, you have these machines that are slowly, be and sorry, not just machines, but programs that are becoming sentient. And the question is, where does one begin and where does one end? Especially the, with a case, the touch comas, exactly. Yeah, they the are comas. sentient computers inside a war machine. Inside a spider tank. Actually, they became sentient. They weren't yeah. sentient originally, but they began to learn, and the people began to treat them not as as, as as tools, but as team members. And then one day, one actually asked why, and then that did it. And then the other was like, you asked why? And then they, they became alive. They actually became characters you cared about. Like and when they died, one eventually like when they decided to leave the organization and mm -hmm. care for people. Yep, it became a a, a a a nursing home attendant. Yeah, that that was oh my god, that what dude? I'm sorry, and you're gonna call me a, a punk? I don't really don't care. But when they died, I was actually like kind of like kind of chuckling. Yeah. Like, oh, poor well, dudes. the the characters, these Tachikomo characters, they had the at least the American voices for them were very childlike, and their inflection was often either excitable or somewhat innocent. The Japanese ones weren't that far from it, although they use like you know classic characters, like the woman who did some of the character voices um, for 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 for, for Uruse Yatsura, which is Lum, um, and some of the some of the younger child voices, like for for, for uh, Moronoke, and so you heard her voices. You know, um, Mina Minayoto, I forgot her last year. Fumi Minayoto, you heard her voice in there quite a bit. I was like. Oh, it's okay. There's Fumi. There's not. Um, let's see. No, not because I I cannot pronounce it. Whatever. I call it Naki. Um, she was in there. I was like, oh wow, I know these voices. When you heard them, you knew you were gonna get this wide range of emotion. And every character, from even the most inane, stupid bad guys, had some depth to them. They weren't just okay. I'm gonna knock you around because you're a bad guy. Even the bad guys had some depth to them. So. I really think if you watched it, you'd appreciate the show, Anthony Will, because it, it, it will speak to their, your better intelligence, if you will. And it's definitely think, worth a look. Yeah, definitely worth a look. Yeah, so uh, the shelling, I, I do remember seeing I was like, okay, that was pretty good. I never heard it called the shelling before, but I'm like, okay. I, I, I did see it, and I was very, very impressed with it. It definitely bodes well. I understand the, the reservations you might have, uh, as, as anyone would when a beloved property tr uh, changes mediums, especially going from the, a, a Japanese oversight to a more Western oversight where there are different ideas and values that might clash with the original story. And that's where, I have, that's, that's where my trepidation lies. Um, there are avenues that the Japanese culture or the Asian cultures will go into and ideals of um, of oneness of community as opposed to, as opposed to the individual uh, that may not carry over to it because that's what I like about Ghost in the Shell. It tended to be about the individual uh, to, you know, to some extent, but how the individual fits into the whole. So it was like, okay, you're talking about the one person. At the same time, you talk about how that one person can still be at one with the whole. I'm like, okay. And they, they pull it off for like, like, like the, um, oh God, the Laughing Man. Uh, that was the... That was the best character. He was this person who wanted to be himself, but at the same time was all about, you know, contributing or contributing to the whole or protecting the whole. You know, so I really want to see if they go the whole, you know, like a like like a like a complex from go from the shell all the way to standalone complex and then they do the running man later on. It could be a fantastic series. And I just talked your show to death. I do apologize. That's, oh, that's love, fine. That's absolutely fine. It's more than I would have hoped to get out of the rest of these guys. <laughs> Dude, that that's the one. That's one of the few card. Well, animes. Up. Uh, you know what? 
television shows that I that I really really connected with, uh, you know, almost as much as as, as I love the uh, Stephen King uh, novels, especially uh, Dark Tower. That's my other opus that I love. So it's Dark Tower, and it's oh sorry, it's Dark Tower. Then it's um, Ghost in the Shell. Whew, I can breathe now. <laughs> <laughs> So, we are pushing three hours, guys. No. Two. Two hours. Two hours. We started at five, my time. Five, That's right. That's right. So, final uh, item on the list, at least for me tonight. Uh, Marvel has launched a, a brand new uh, Venom line of comics. Uh, he's, he did a little time as a secret agent. He did a little time as a guardian of the galaxy. And now Venom is back on Earth with a new host. What do you, uh what are you guys thoughts on on Venom before I get into this? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Venom. Okay, which Venom? Are we talking Eddie Brock Venom? So Eddie Brock Venom, who was Agent Venom, is went into space. Now he's back with a new host. No, this is not Eddie Brock. Oh wow. Okay. This is a yeah, brand I've, I've new for a host for the Venom symbiote. Huh. What the hell happened to Eddie? Doesn't say. Uh, the new host's name is Lee Price. He is a disabled military veteran with a large chip on his shoulder who finds himself turning to crime in order to pay the bills. Hmm. Lee Price, why well, that name sound familiar? I, I think I remember a character named Lee Price a long, long time ago in Marvel, and I can't remember where I remember him from. Oh, well. The, the art for Venom has gone... It, well... It went to a more matte actual costume look for a little while as Agent Venom and as Guardian Venom. Mm -hmm. uh, the cover for this new uh, comic book uh, looks like it's gone back to the uh, Todd McFarlane roots. Oh, awesome. Todd, Todd McFarlane, if you guys don't know, the guy who would you spawn. Yes. He is the original creator of Venom. I, I remember those comics. I think I, think I have a couple of them in my uh, war chest over here. I'll dig them out and see what they look like. Leading this strip uh, is writer Mike Costa and artist Geraldo Ooh. Sandoval. Mike Costa from a lot of famous X-Men uh, run titles. Um, it's like what God loves. Well, he, he didn't write what God loves men, uh, man kills, but he did do a lot of adaptations of that one. Okay, cool. Definitely want to see that. The interesting flip of of this comic, uh, the as far as uh, the story, the narrator is not Lee. The narrator really? is Venom. Oh, the symbiote. Okay, so the, the symbiote, symbiote is, is now aware. The symbiote has a voice. He has a character, and instead of being the the corrupting uh, presence. He's actually kind of a, a middle ground that's trying to uh, steer Lee in a less morally ambiguous uh, direction. Hmm. Okay, I, okay, I'm trying to figure it. So I'm trying to see all the people who've been Venom. I'm like, okay. So Flash Thompson is in Venom because he was Agent Venom. And Eddie Brock is in Venom. So I wonder what the hell happened to those two. So who now knows? i got to go read this to find out what happened to them. I got, I got to definitely got to find out now. All right. It's an interesting change to the Venom character that I think brings uh, some new life to to the idea and the uh, not the the host, but brings out the symbiote as a character more than the host itself. Okay. Oh, come on, Marvel. Marvel says here, after being separated from Flash Thompson through unspecified means. Really? That's it? Unspecified means. Oh, Marvel. Cheeky buggers. No backstory, just unspecified means. Leave it a mystery for something in the future. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking we might see more than one symbiote later on. Because those things really don't detach all the way. Well, no. Just We've saying. seen uh, Anti-Venom came as a, uh, from, was it Brock? Mm -hmm. because uh, because he just stated a a, a young symbiote for himself mm -hmm. and then of course there's carnage and yeah. um i'm thinking what other symbiotes are there 
Oh my god, there was so many. I, I can't remember. I can't. Remember. It's been so long. I've seen the other the other symbiotes. Um, I, I, I know there was there was Carnage. There and there was Wrath. They had a whole bunch of like weird killer names. I forgot all the names. I know the yellow one, the green one, the ones that the army, sorry, that the military um tried to spawn on their own, and uh, they, they they all went crazy and all attacked Spider Man. Wow, there are so many. I I remember about. 14 at one time it got crazy there were 14 different symbiotes at one time so it's quite possible that uh brock and thompson have their own symbiotes could be could be but it does say here separated through unknown to unspecified means yeah well it's only the first issue so there's plenty of opportunity to further explain all right i want to check this out definitely gotta check this out Absolutely. I'm, I'm getting all my information from the IGN review. I haven't read it yet. I need to. <laughs> they get caught up. Wow, dude, speaking of old that's been around for a while, um, Venom's been around since 88. 27, 28 years now? That's quite a lot of time. I have been and, around for a while. And, and speaking of Todd McFarlane, Spawn is still going as well in the over 600 issues. I have the first 125. First I have all 600 on Comixology. No, I have actual hard copies. Physical nice. copies. Anthony, like, yeah. Will, you guys got any thoughts? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've been replaced, Anthony. I think we've been replaced. That's Marv, fine. I definitely want you back more often. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't read comic books, so I, I have nothing to add to that. I, I need someone who has more interest than just the CW TV shows in this show. Well, I have more interest, but that's all George wants to talk about is his show. So, you know, I would like to talk about other things. but Well, next yeah. time I ask for feedback, please give it. You, dude, and, and I can't type. You know that, right? Just tell me to shut up. and I'll be like, Well, then bring it up this. in the show. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to take over. This is you guys' show. I'm just a guest. All right, but... well, who's hotter, Claudia Black or Aaron Gray in their perspective? <laughs> oh, my TV God. Shows? Claudia. <laughs> okay, Aaron. Okay, Aaron Gray. Do you mean Buck, and Buck Rogers, Rogers? Aaron Gay? Buck Rogers. Buck yeah. Rogers, Aaron yeah. Gray. Yeah, about... or Claudia Black. Or Claudia Black. In her hair. Aaron Gray, because she, Aaron had, Gay. She, had those spand she had those spandex pants on. I don't know who these me? people are. You never Aaron seen Gray Buck Rogers is, in the 25th um, century? Colonel I never have. Oh, Buck Rogers. oh my God. Dude, Colonel Lewis. You're a fetus. Buck Rogers. Black is? You're a fetus. I was a fetus, yes. <laughs> you are a fetus. Aaron Sung from Farscape. You know Aaron uh, Sung. Claudia Black, yeah, she was right? Hot. She was hot. We already talked hot. about Still it. Still hot. But Aaron Gray, the original hotness, she had those disco Hot pants, no, 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 hot pants, but it's bad. So how all pants, that? She had I'm those sure. white girl juicy lips, man, for about and they were this would be Aaron Gray collagen. Has thin lips. What do you know? Back about? then, when she was well, this is back she in still the had day, thin lips. she got old. Well, hey, I thought they were juicy back then. I'm like, oh, damn. No, I think Claudia Black is just unbelievably, unbelievably beautiful. Oh, just Aaron stunning. Gray in the day was hotter. Really? You like Aaron uh, yeah. Gray? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Claudia had the better That's... smile. Claudia have the way that giant yeah. smile. I love her smile. And she's funnier. She is absolutely funnier. So I think yeah. I might have stumbled up on something, uh, some hot news. Hot news? Yeah. Uh, a poster from, on the Alien Facebook page has a, a shadowed xenomorph face. Uh, the top, it's a, in small letters, says run. And on the bottom, it says May 19th. Hmm. Okay, Alien how does that Covenant is coming on Claudia May 19th. Black or Aaron Gray? I'm, I'm trying to figure out, dude. Okay, we're talking about two two of the hottest sci-fi women ever, and you, you talk about aliens. Right? You you're see, talking this about two of the hottest sci-fi women up, ever. Every who, time I, I bring something up, you're like, I, I got something else we could talk about, and nobody cares. Dude, Erin Gray <laughs> used to, I mean, dude, when she was modeling, right, I remember, like, good Lord, she's going to be on this show. The best thing I saw her in Buck was Rogers. Buck Rogers. But when, that, but when the vampire captured her and she was all like, Buck. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> I was like, oh, boy. Dude, dude. <laughs> that one. And then, then when she was on Sinaloa 
and she had to be all sexy. I was like, ooh, oh my god. No, I do admit, Aaron Gray was hot for the 80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I, but I'm leaning to towards Claudia Black. I'm no, leaning it's... towards Claudia Black. Uh, gotta go with Aaron Gray. Gotta go with Aaron Gray. I'm gonna play um, in the middle of the field because I... Whew, they both... Oh, God. No, I mean, I had, as a teenage boy, young, 13, whatever, 12... Hot for Aaron Gray. Oh my God! You kidding? Shoot. All right. Well, what about Linda Carter or Aaron Gray? Oh, Which one? Jesus oh. Christ! Dude. Wow. <laughs> Linda Carter. Linda Carter. Linda Carter. Right. I hands hands down. down. I I'll take the Carter. costume, but I still go with Aaron Gray. You're crazy. You are you're, crazy, you're insane. dude. Yeah. Linda no. Carter had the legs. She had the look. She had that. Dude, she had that almost black girl swagger when she was like, you know, to the guy. You will not. I'm like, oh. Finger waggle and head waggle, like oh hell yes. Yeah, but you got to remember, I'd never seen a black woman at this point. I was in England, oh. all white people. No, I it's think... not. They were black people. Linda in Carter is white. not when I was. I didn't have any yeah. black friends. I didn't have any black Linda people. Linda Carter in... is white. We had, by we the had way. Pakistanis Carter... and we had Indians. Linda Carter is white, but she had the way she carried. Her. I was like, going, dear God, this woman is absolutely gorgeous. I and think again, I might have to lean towards Claudia Black. For, of course you yeah. Would. Oh, you looked her up? You looked yes, her up, Yes, I looked both of them. If, yes. Yeah. Isn't she delicious, Black. dude? Hot. Oh. I mean, she's beautiful. Oh. That tank top? Dude, you should see her acting in Farscape. And then if you want to see her more recent acting, look at her in the last season of, of, of Stargate. Not Universe, just regular Stargate. Stargate, SG, like SG, SGC. Look SG1. at her in that one. SG1, thank you. Uh, SG1, fan. Freaking fantastic! Mm-hmm. Oh my god, her character in Far in Farscape was really sexy, but she had that you know that I'm gonna shoot every damn thing in front of me sexiness type. I was like, oh, silly, you know what? You can shoot me any damn time, woman. Mm. I think George might want us to shut this down now. We've gone over two hours. So. That said, Erin Gray is is uh, in in her in her day pretty damn gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, that's why I brought it up. That's and why I even, brought it up. Even her more Claudia recent pictures. Black so she's a very or handsome Aaron woman. Gray. <laughs> but yes, we have uh, ex- uh, uh, reached the two-hour mark. About time to wrap things up. A- and a good a good note to wrap things up on, I'd say. Oh yeah, very good note. With my lotion. All right, oh, uh, <laughs> Mark. Since you weren't here in the beginning, where can people find you on social media? You guys can find me uh, on Twitter or at M A R V Z W O R D Z. That's Mars Words. And you can find me on any comedy stage, live uh, live poetry reading, or even an impromptu uh, acts anywhere in the northern Cincinnati, Kentucky area as Mars Words. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight. This is Super Geeks episode 39. My name is Ross here with Anthony and Will, and we'll see you all again next time.